All right, welcome everybody. We are uh, we are live here for session two of uh, Adventures in the Eastmark with Jose and Eloy. Uh, they will be up in a minute. Right now, I'm sharing the map for this introduction. Uh, session two. So the last uh, last session, you discovered that there was some serious danger amassing on the eastern frontier. Um, Poplar Grove was attacked. Uh, it managed to survive, but took a beating. You uh, saved Nadaros uh, City, and you managed to apprehend an evil wizard in the old tower that was causing these problems. You took him back to the Duke. The Duke, uh, of course, celebrated uh, your uh, success and your initiative by making you lieutenants in his army and making you the uh, co-founders of the Eastmark Rangers. Uh, mm -hmm. You celebrated, you feasted, and then he said your first mission will be to, to head to uh, Asylum down here in Sinister Glen and find out what, what Gordon Rainwright uh, is, uh, uh, why he needs our help. And that is where we will be today, right? Right in this region here. And again, you gentlemen have seen some of the west, east here. You've been in the pastor around Nadaros, the inn, but you've never traveled along the Blue Hills or the Sinister Glen in your in your lives. So this is all fairly new to you, okay? All right, so okay. let's lose that screen share. There we go. Okay, gents. All right, so there they are, Jose and Eloy. Welcome them. All right, so uh, you're up like good rangers would be before the sun uh, the, the following morning of the, maybe a little bit uh, tired from your night, late night of, of celebrating your... Uh, your uh, medal ceremony. Um, you heard. You heard early in the morning. Uh, uh, plenty of movement and noises, even in the city of uh, Roblin. There's a lot of going on, but but this was special. And as you uh, as you dress and as you uh, grab a, as you grab some kind of uh, early morning breakfast and refreshments, and you uh, you ask the Duke's groom. Uh, Enrico the Elder, he is the uh, he is the father of the groom of the uh, grazing council. So you know he and his father. But to 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 get your horses, uh, and it is dark. Sun is not up yet. And as you uh, as you head out of uh, the city proper, uh, across the bridge of Rillo Creek, you see amassed in the fields the army, the Duke's army, and you see Commander Sejanus. <coughs> <clears throat> let me uh, let me grab Sejanus, and I'll screen share Sejanus here. I don't know if I've got him right here for you. Uh, but you see Commander Sejanus. All right. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. And he is yelling at troops. This is a huge... Hmm, what is going on? My computer is, like, running slow here. Hmm. Well, maybe that won't happen. Maybe we just ignore the screen share today. I think it's a okay. problem. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? <laughs> yes, that's the important wow. thing. Yeah. What is going on? Okay. Oh, there we go. There he is. So Janus, uh, he's, he is the field commander, not of the entire army, but he is, he is uh, one of the field commanders. And, um, you see this gentleman, uh, he is barking orders, he is among many of the troops, and he sees you from a distance. Okay, there we go, got rid of that, so I think I can stop screen sharing. Oh, shoot. <laughs> there we go. What is going on? This is so bizarre, it's like everything is just... Okay, can you see me guys? Is everything back to yep. normal? Okay, I don't know. I may not be able to screen share tonight, so that's just the way it's going to be. Um, anyway, he waves you over in the darkness of the uh, before dawn, um, and uh, you it, you see uh, there are uh, men running every which way. And uh, as he approaches you, waves you over. Uh, Good morning, gentlemen. Congratulations on your your medals. Um, thanks to the information we, we received from you uh, three or four days ago. The Duke has decided to divide his army. I am amassing 300 troops to head to the east to fortify the area around Poplar Grove and um, Knoll yes. Tower. 
And so that's what we're doing this morning. And uh, he uh, he stops as he's telling you, talking to you, looks over your head and says, Sergeant, I told you, train those archers. Get those archers ready to go. And, and you hear him go, but but sir, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not qualified. Sergeant, I don't want to hear excuses. Get those archers trained. And he turns, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, we don't, we just, we need to have... Uh, we need better men. Have your uh, have your men faced I, orcs before, Sir Janus? Some of my men, I believe, have, but uh, many many have not. They don't know what uh, they do not know what uh, lay in store. Um, uh, there's a lot of horrors, I believe, they may witness, but uh, they're soldiers. They we will lead them the best we can, and we will demand they they meet the task. Uh, now, rumor tells me you're headed down to Lord Wainwright. Yes, uh, so has uh, the Duke commanded. Uh, and, and the Duke told us that there's just some trouble with Lord Wainwright, but we don't know anything beyond that, do we? Is, is that one? Uh, right, all you know is that he's, mm. he's requested aid. Yeah. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, the commander looks at you, and, and, and gentlemen, may I speak Yes, for you? please. Uh, Uh, Lord Wainwright is an arrogant imbecile, mm. but he has the ear of the queen. He is a powerful landowner, and he commands the castle in the south. Um, so um, he's not to be taken lightly, but I, but I tell you, he is forever requesting our aid. And usually it is uh, pedestrian. It is minuscule in problem. He is... Uh, so I hope I hope the Duke is not wasting your time sending you. South. What, what hope, kind of problems has he had? Bandits and such, or has there been actual? Uh, he has the kind of problems any any large landowner would have. Uh, but he he demands attention all the time, and generally his his problems are minute compared to the things the Duke must deal with. Uh, I do hope this is not a wild goose chase uh, for you. You're good men, and we need good men doing more important things. Um, before you go, up, oh, Sergeant, didn't I tell you? You need to train those archers. Get through there. Get them trained. Yeah. Well, I, I am going to go crazy with the quality of my <laughs> help here. Uh, well, ho gentlemen, uh, hopefully just yes. two men will be able to uh, fulfill uh, his request for aid. Uh, hopefully, uh, Eldrin and I can take care of whatever it is that needs handling. Oh, I'm almost certain you can. Uh, uh, but in these trying times, uh, you brought news to us we had not heard in years. So, you know, it is conceivable this time is not, it is not a crying. <laughs> but I will warn you now, he is a moron, he's an imbecile, he's arrogant, mm. he's pompous. Uh, and, uh, so just be aware of that, yeah. uh, my friends. I, uh, you know, us soldiers have to look out for each other. Yeah, have, have you been south recently uh, to asylum? How is the road to... Uh, the road to asylum is, is well trafficked uh, uh, by uh, traders and by uh, – so generally we have very few issues along the road. Uh, as far as the west road on the west mm -hmm. side of Willow Creek, yes, that road is usually clear and is usually uh, without uh, problem. So again, I don't know uh, – I don't I – don't, I, I assume you won't have much issue along that path, but uh, again, we're now living in a, a, a different time. Uh, the shadow yes. grows. Penumbra rears his head. Um, gentlemen, uh, there is Derry Wetfoot. Uh, he is he is down below the, in the bridge. Uh, he has a he has a canoe in which he can get you down river uh, faster than by horseback. But that is entirely up to you. Uh, by boat, it usually takes about four days. Horseback takes about six days. Uh, but he has been told to wait down there uh, uh, along the underneath the bridge there along the dock. Uh, so. Uh, waiting for you if you want to take uh, take the boat. I warn you, he is a cranky little halfling, but he's a good he's a, he's a good boatman in a good river. But he uh, has a canoe or a barge. Just a, he he smiles and he he has enough for you two gents and your equipment. That's the, uh, in him. It is not no a barge, horses. no. Yeah. But it moves quickly. And it can be pretty non-discreet. I mean, it can be pretty in, uh, indiscreet, uh, you know, and easy to navigate the river without a lot of witness, I mean, a lot of 
a lot of notice. I'm here. I haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I my concern is being able to move around once we're down there, but perhaps yes. we can requisition some horses uh, from the asylum. From the Duke, yes. Oh yeah, the Duke. The Duke would have to, by order of the, uh, the Duke. Excuse me. Uh, see, already Lord Wainwright has me believe that's the new Duke. Uh, Lord Wainwright would, by order, have to have to relinquish horses to men of the uh, army. So you could always requisition uh, directly from the uh, the Lord. But that's entirely up to you, gents. Uh, I know I know what a, ho a good horse means to a soldier, uh, but I just I, I wanted you to know you do have other means of transportation. Now, as you can see, before sunup, I must mobilize three hundred men. Uh, and he starts to turn and walk away. Again, he barks, Penumbra will have you, boy. I told you, train those archers. And he looks over his shoulder and he says, Gentlemen, I don't know if I will ever see you again, but I say this now. I hope to never see you on the field. Good day, and may Valorian, uh, uh, Valian watch, watch over you. And then he turns and starts barking orders. Man, we force march 45 minutes. And he's storming away. Yes. He sticks his hand in the air. Uh, All right. So, again, you've got maybe an hour, 45 minutes yeah. before the sun comes up, maybe 4.35 in the morning. It is summer. It's it's brisk, but you know it will be cooking here by 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. It's going to be warm. This is midsummer, right? Uh, the uh, – the road, uh, there is the Willow Creek that will take you all the way down. And, of course, there's mm -hmm. the West Road on the west mm -hmm. side of Willow mm -hmm. Creek. Yeah, there's no Ford, or there, there doesn't seem to be a Ford uh, down the East Road. So our best bet is to either take the West Road or go down the, go down the Willow Creek. Yeah. Right. There is a, there is a bridge uh, ah. on the West Road at some point. It crosses. Okay. It. Yeah. There is a bridge. It's just – it's positioned weird on the map, but it's a bridge. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a little – yeah, it, it, I thought it was a town, but mm -hmm. yeah, maybe a bridge. Uh, yeah, and I would right. have thought they'd put it over, but it's huh. kind of a weird – but yeah, I think that's supposed to be a bridge that's about okay. halfway. Yeah. That's yeah, okay. I see it there. Um, maybe it's a ferry. Let's say you, Eldrin. Yeah. Should we... Might Could be. be a ferry, yeah. Considering you've right. never been there, you, you really don't know. You don't know how accurate That's the true. map is. That's true. The, you know, the world may be flat. You may go right off the edge. Everybody knows the world is flat. <laughs> right. Um, well, we, we could stand to gain two days if we take both, uh, but then we'd have to requ requisition horses to return north in any case. Uh, yeah, that, that, that would be so, my, my question. If... if Unless unless uh, a boatman can be hailed to bring us north, we would need steeds, and we would need steeds. Mayhap we should trust to what we know and write down. To return. But uh, yeah, I probably uh, feel safer. Although uh, although we'll, we'll it think, may uh, be it may be a risk uh, to ride through that swamp all the way to asylum. Oh, well, it's, it's a glen. It's not a swamp. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a forest. Right, right. It's, in a, the, it's a glen, yeah. It's, yeah. it's just a forest. It's by the Blue Hills and then the Sinister Glen. Uh, Did we get a sense of urgency well, from I suppose the on the road we start out. We... Uh, only that he said, gentlemen, uh, get rest because you ride at dawn. That's that's that was the that's the most he told you. You're gonna, yeah. you've gotta, you, your first task will be to meet Lord Wainwright and deal with his per troubles. Uh, and you write it down. Yeah. Uh, however, as the commander just told you, it seems like he's always sending messengers up here okay. asking for help. Yeah. I mean, you know it'll be well, a six-day uh, ride uh, or a four-day yeah. four boat trip. So, I mean, it's – whether you left yeah. in a few hours or you left in – right, it's just going to depend right. on – right? Yeah, there are advantages to both because uh, – we might. Yeah, and you know, and I, I will let you, if you want, I'll let you push your horses. Uh, but then if something occurs, your horses would be, you would be at, you would be at, they would be at fatigue, of course, with minuses, and you might Correct. as well, right? Yeah. If you wanted to double, if you wanted to double time your horses to make up a day or something. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. 
Metal, well, yeah, and oh, we stand we stand a greater chance of getting like bandits on the road or something. Um, if we're on the actual road as opposed to traveling right. down river, right? Uh, but I don't know. It's uh, well, then I say if if we if there's a quest if if we can make up two days. Uh, it, it's probably worth it to go by river just because we have a task ahead of us other than this, right? We have an organizational task that this will be delaying. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. We could get there faster and we'll, we'll get two days. Two days. Uh, It'll be at least yeah, 10 days before they are back plus whatever time we need. But yeah, you're right. I think we should save time. So we'll leave our horses at the stables here and then we'll requisition horses from uh, Lord Wainwright okay. once we arrive. Uh, Enrico the Elder, uh, as you deliver the horses back to him, is there, is there a problem, gentlemen? Little old man, you guys have known him and his son for years. Uh, he cocks an eyebrow. Is there is there hey. a problem? No, on the contrary. On the contrary, we trust you. Um, our fine beasts have, have earned a holiday. To stable our horses. Ah. Yes, uh, Would you like me to uh, that, uh, uh, send them down? Would you like me to send them down with riders? They would. They would follow you by two days. Hmm. I don't know how dangerous the roads will be. Uh, I, I believe we, we can requisition horses down there. Our, our steeds earned the holiday after being uh, ridden so, so hard for you yeah. last week. Ah, uh, yes. He leans in. Lord Rainwright and his, his head groom, Wallace, uh, mention, mention me and Wallace will give you the Excellent. best you can. Uh, that, is, that is great to hear. We will do that. Oh, I must look out for you. You have always looked out for my son, Enrico. Yes, fine lad. Uh, yeah, that, that's what we'll do, Wallace. The stable hand. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Uh, so as you make your way back through uh, Roblita and back outside, back around the bridge, the, the, when you come off Willow Creek, uh, you circle down uh, south around the bridge to a dock. There you see humble little vessels, barges, fishing vessels, people who sleep and stay here. Some just dock here. Um, but uh, there is at the far end, uh, forcing you to walk a quarter of a mile as you move through these boats, people sleeping, lanterns uh, lit. Some are up and about, fishermen pushing off, getting into the river. You get to the end of this row and you find – a little halfling, long beard. Matter of fact, well, I hate to screen share, but I've actually got a canoe with a halfling in it. But uh, well, you're just gonna you're gonna have to wait and see it in the module, gentlemen, at the end of the game. <laughs> uh, and th there it is, this canoe that'll sit you plus him at the end, and in the middle he has a pile of luggage and stuff that mm. he generally carries. Uh, and he's he's out in his boat, he's smoking a pipe, he's he's walking up and down the shore. And he sees uh, both of you approaching, and he stops, takes a, a deep draw on his pipe, blows a smoke ring, and looks up. Master Wolfoot. Mart Martin, Martin, and uh, yes, Aldrin. Yes, you must be Master Wolfoot. Yes, yes. Uh, so you are. Uh, we are headed to uh, asylum. We are headed to uh, that. We are the south. Are you ready to go now? Yes, indeed. Ah, yes. He takes a puff, and then he bangs it out on the side of the boat as he climbs in. Well, get in! Get in! I'm not going to wait for you all day, you landlubbers. I can look at you. I can see you've been in the sun. You've been out riding. You're dirty. You're filthy. You're landlubbers. Are you, you like water? And he, 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 he looks at you. Don't just get in. you got to push the boat <laughs> off. You can't expect me to push 800 pounds off. So, yeah, so we shove off and stow our gear. And, uh, okay, there you go. Now there's oars there, and when I call for you to use them, be ready. And you, you won't know, but you in the front there, left side, you here in the middle, 
right side, but right now you don't need to do anything. The river will take care of most of this. And he just steers mm-hmm. it with another oar, mm-hmm. right, the boat, and you get out into the river. And it is, you know, a few hours later, sun's up, you're starting to bake. Uh, he's 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 been half asleep, hat down. However, he's had a little fishing rod that sets off the back, and the only time he rouses from his slumber is to reel in a fish, and he'll smack it on the side of the boat, and he'll throw it at his feet, and he'll look at every time he looks at it, he says, "We're gonna eat good tonight, gentlemen," you know, and then he's back back down, hat over brim over his head, and back to sleep. Uh, you see, it's it's it's, and again, I have a great image of the river, but I'm not gonna chance it. Uh, but it's wide and it's fairly slow, but it's still moving faster in a, as, a, as the flow cries that you could do on the horses, right? Um, you see travelers at times. Uh, the farther in the day you get, uh, uh, near the end of the day, you know, you've seen the you're, you're seeing sights you have never been able to see before in your in your uh, time here in the East Mark. The Blue Mountains uh, to the west, beautiful. You can see them over the ridge of the trees and the forest. Uh, and uh, the first night, uh, he uh, as it starts, the dust starts to fall, and you're you're seeing all of this. He 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 looks up at you and he says, "Now we can we can push over to the east or the west side, or we can just throw an anchor overboard and and sleep here and eat here. What would you I'd like? I'd rather to do? cook this fish. Yeah. I know you landlubbers. You like to have foot. You like to have ha- land under We'd your feet. We'd also like rather to stretch out a bit, Master Orsman. Yeah. Uh. What side? Do you want to go roadside west or do you want to go east side? Well, right what's here? your experience having traveled these waters? Are the mines? I don't like people, so I avoid the west side because I don't like travelers and other well, Let's go to the east side then. So he steers it that way. You don't have to tell me twice, Eldrin. <laughs> uh, and he gets, you know, he, the boat slides in uh, nice and smooth. One of you has to jump out and kind of grab the canoe and pull it up. Uh, he climbs out. He's collecting fish in his hands, and he runs over, throws it down, and starts to make a rock fireplace pit. Piling rocks up, he's trying to get something lit. Mm-hmm. And in just a few hours, you've enjoyed a campfire. You've enjoyed uh, uh, his uh, uh, mouth harp. You know, he plays a little bit, smokes quite a bit, and he's made, he's played you up some fish, fresh fish. So you don't have to take rations off for tonight, gentlemen. If you don't, yes. if you have rations, you may not. Excellent. Knowing you guys, you hunt, right? So you probably don't have rations. Of course we have yeah. rations. So. No, no, we do. We do. <laughs> but, okay, but you don't rations. have to use them, Thank gents, you. because he's he's fed you fresh yes. fish. Okay. Uh, before you know it, he's snoring away. Uh, he falls asleep with his pipe uh, hanging out of his mouth, and at some point the snoring is is horrible. Pipe uh, at, uh, at some point just kind of seems to go out, stop smoking. Um, and he and he's he's sleeping, sitting up with his back against a log, just like he's was sleeping in the boat. This, this is like the way he does things. Okay. Should I take the first mm-hmm. watch, Martin? Well, uh, uh, yes. Uh, it seems it must be a peaceful ride, though, with Master Wilfred's uh, attitude. He certainly seems at ease. Uh, but yeah, let let us keep watch. Let us not take anything for granted so we'll we'll take turns okay taking a watch uh it's been a long day uh, uh aldrin as uh as as the night wears on uh you all you hear is the river once in a while you hear frogs you hear things you're not accustomed to here right because you're a plains man you're a uh you're more of a forest uh so uh, it's hard to discern what might be a threatening sound versus the sounds of the night However, uh, hours pass uh, uneventful, um, and you you're at the point where you can barely keep your eyes uh, open, and uh, you uh, jostle your friend Martine awake. Right. Um, and uh, so far, it appears as though uh, it's a beautiful summer night. Oh. Other than these frogs singing, I don't I haven't heard any thread, my friend. <laughs> Best <laughs> strange river frogs we seem to have here. Yes, uh, rather high pitched. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, but but they make. But after a while, they become music to your ears. Correct. You, you tune them out. Uh, Martin, uh, again, uh, you might walk around a little bit to stay awake until you get awake. 
Yeah, um, you, you, uh, you hear very little on the roads. You hear very little on the river other than the river. Again, some un- unaccustomed noises. At some point early in the morning, you hear a hoot owl. Um, you might actually, as a ranger, spot him and find him in, in trees mm-hmm. not far from you and watch him hunt. Uh, you know, see this owl uh, get himself a, a field mouse or a rat or something. Um, this is one of the few things that remind you of the of the prairie, right? These these events, these uh, that that is that is something that it feels like home. Um, uh, mm-hmm. It passes uneventfully, nothing uh, uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, uh, as the sun starts to break in the east, uh, he's up early and he's kicking he's cooking uh, he's kicking he's not making breakfast he's packing the boat he's kicking sand over those rocks and making sure they don't relight and he says we don't eat breakfast here we get on the we get on the river and he you know hops in the boat and he says come on now push it loose i guess Let's we go. push the boat into the water my friend <laughs> uh, soon you're underway back to it right he's he's back uh, you hit a couple of rough spots in the river, a uh, little white water, and uh, he, he barks for you to drop those oars, gentlemen, and uh, just just make sure we don't spin around sideways. We're done for. If this sucker goes sideways, we roll, we lose us, we lose it, we're, we're done for. So he just pilots you through, uh, barking commands. You, It's pretty natural, right? You just know don't let the, don't let the canoe get sideways. Mm-hmm. You manage to navigate this without a problem. Uh, midday, he's, again, caught a couple more fish. He slept uh, again a little bit, and as you start to come to a widening of the river, a slowing and a widening of the river, and it starts to make a bend to the west, uh, you know, he wakes up. It's like he tells, the, it's like he can tell the change of the speed of the river. He wakes up. Oh, we're at the we're at the bridge, right around this bend up here. But before hmm. you can see the bridge, you can hear it. You can hear the screaming. You can hear the raging. You can hear the destruction. You hear something hitting the water. And he stands up at his boat and says, you know, basically his uh, 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 he, he stands up. He pulls his hat off and he says, that isn't normal. Uh, and then he, he, he starts to paddle the boat faster to get to the bend. And as the boat turns the bend, you see the bridge is, is, is in pieces. And you see a two-headed giant in the river and he has waylaid uh this bridge he's waylaid a caravan he's got one body in one hand he's flipped it he's oh he's got you see people floating in the river blood is, is uh, along the uh, in the river as he is waylaying yeah. these uh this bridge and these these uh travelers yeah. um he has two heads one has a big club the other one is free he has a he has a second club but but the other hand is full of a body as he yeah. as he swings it and pitches it. You recognize it as an Eden, yeah. right? You know immediately. You have trained for this. You have you have heard of these creatures, but this will be the first time you have ever yeah. seen one. And he's the river's not so deep that he isn't stomping around in the river, but it's wide. It's deep enough. It's about mid thigh mm-hmm. on him as he's tearing chunks of this stone yeah. bridge. Get us to the shore, master. And the boat's master Wilson, now quickly. Right. Uh, you want to go? I'm sorry. Get I didn't us to the shore you. quickly now. Oh, yeah. Because uh, we, yeah, we don't want to get uh, too. He, he barks out as he yeah. he's he's he starts to paddle naturally to the mm-hmm. east side. Is that where you want to go? Uh, yeah, it okay. doesn't really matter. So yeah. he's, he's paddling <laughs> fiercely, uh, and as it hits mm-hmm. the shore, uh, this creature is looking with two heads, and he sees you plain okay. as day as you reach the shore. He's probably forty meters All from right. you right now. Good. So jump out of the you. river. Yeah. Jump out of the boat. Uh, string the bow. Right. And uh, knock re- arrows. Yeah. Ready to shoot. Okay. Uh, very hard for you, for you to surprise them, which I uh, rolled. Uh, and, of course, you did not surprise yeah. him with two hands. You said it's, um, it's, we'll be you're 40 not meters from him, Jason? Either. Yes. Yeah, you're about 41 so that's meters. Uh, long range starting with Eloy. For, yeah. for, for a short okay. yeah. I'm sure he'll close um, that quick. <laughs> yep. Yep. And uh, um, so we'll roll initiative as he's as he's seeing uh, he's seeing more victims now float over to the other side. The little hobbit uh, uh, 
you know, he leaps out of the boat the minute it hits the shore, and he starts running for rocks and climbing up the bank to find a spot to hide. This is not a warrior. This is a boatman and a fisherman. So he is, you know, he's running for cover. Um, you do hear and see as you start to draw and take aim. You notice on the bridge there's a lone warrior on the, what's left of the bridge with a shield and a spear. And he's screaming at this Etten in some strange tongue, some strange accent. He's speaking your language, but he's got a uh -huh. thick accent. Uh -huh. Cool. Cool. Uh -huh. I know who this is. Yeah. yeah. If I if I could do well, if yeah. I could do well, I, know, I would, again. but I yeah. can't. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. So, uh, long range, if I'm reading this correctly, we will have a minus one to our to hit Correct. Roll. But these Correct. being an Etten, we got plus three. Correct. Yeah. Plus your yes, dexterity that's, bonus. That's right. Yeah. yeah, so we got a net. Yep. Yep. Plus two on it, plus dexterity. Yeah. That plus two. Right. Yep. So round one, and we'll roll initiative every round. Are we rolling side initiative? I think that's what we were doing. I, I can't remember what we did. No, last we time. roll individual. Uh, no, I want you. I want you guys to oh, roll cool. independently, and he and just a, rolls once. One d six, right? Right. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, add your dex bonus, yeah. of course. First character I've played in a while that does not have a dex bonus. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, for a ranger. So, uh, hey, I rolled three d six down the line. So <laughs> we're doing this old school. So nice. Okay, uh, I rolled a two, gentlemen. So all you've got to do is beat it. Done. Two. <laughs> all right. I six. So yeah, four. All right. All right. Uh, and again, you can choose who goes. <coughs> what did you You can choose who goes first between you two. Unless, of course, one is melee, one is range. And then, of course, next uh, is indeed, I think, movement yeah. or range. We're, right? we're, we're, both, we're both using range okay. weapons this round. So. Yeah. And Eloy, Eloy goes first because okay. he rolled higher initiatives. Okay. So I okay. roll a 9 plus 2 is 11. I only hit armor class 7, though. Uh, oof. Yeah, so uh, yeah. just too far. Yeah. Right? Maybe you mis misjudged his size mm -hmm. with his mm -hmm. distance and it uh, hits in the water at his, at his hips. Yeah. I rolled a 13, so I armor class 5. Okay, again, same thing. As you draw, you fire, uh, and it, it hits a little higher. Uh, maybe uh, maybe at waist, uh, almost waist high, hits, hits a piece of this bridge that he's broken loose. You see this uh, uh, Vaughn. Uh, rolled a six for initiative. He drops down onto the rock, preparing to. Uh, he drops down one from the top onto this rock closest where your arrow just hit, preparing for mm -hmm. a melee attack. This creature, uh, at this point, is looking in melee with with Vaughn, right? So he's not uh, he's not looking to move. So mm -hmm. Vaughn would go first. Uh, I, want, I want you guys to roll for him if that's okay, right? You guys fight for Vaughn. Is that is that too sure. much? Would that be asking yeah, too okay. much to do? Okay, uh, so uh, he is a level, he's like you, he's a level three warrior. Uh, he has a spike and he has a hand axe and he has a shield, right? Uh, I don't know if I gave you that NPC sheet, but if you don't have it, I've got his numbers, okay? So he can go first. He rolled a six along with you, so. Let me pull, let me make sure I can. So you you said just, just to make sure, Jason, because my internet. You said that armor class five was not good enough, right? Just confirm. Yeah, correct. I, my my internet kind of flashed there. All right. Yeah, no, it unfortunately no, it is not right. good enough. Um, let me double check no, though that no, I didn't no no write no no no. I remember. It's what's written on your paper, not what's anywhere else. Oh no, but I'm but I'm trying to do this totally rules as written. So I want to double check, make sure I didn't mess that up. Because that would suck. This thing is not easy. This is a beast. Uh, no, it's armor. Yeah, I got the armor class right. I, maybe too much for you, but fortunately yeah. I have Wallace to help. Wallace has a strength of plus mm -hmm. one, gentlemen. Okay. Uh, and and he has armor class of three, hit points of twenty one. 
AC three. Okay. There you go. So 21, I'll let you... plus one. Okay. And what sword yep. is he using? He has a short pike uh, spear, and he has a hand axe and a shield. He did, so he can throw the pike, or he can use it as a weapon, okay. a melee weapon. And right. and okay. those and are shield. what one d six weapons or one d eight? A uh, great question. I did uh, not. Write let this me down. take a look real oh, quick. Let's... I think they're one d six. You said it's I'm a short sure pike, which is a one d six. Yeah, and, and a, a hand, hand axe, axe which should be one d six as well. Excellent. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Okay. Okay. Ooh, he rolls a 12 plus 1 is 13, so that would be armor class 5. Yeah. Okay, uh, so stepping forward and driving mm -hmm. this spear, uh, you know, these two, uh, this large Etten is, he, he's maybe a little nervous, doesn't want to mm -hmm. get too mm -hmm. close, right? Uh, this thing is terrifying. Large, two arms, uh, two heads, uh, and now it goes... Uh, it has one free hand. This is its off hand, uh, its left hand. The other hand has a large club in it. And he had a body in that hand, but he had already dispensed with that. He swipes down uh, with that hand uh, upon uh, Vaughn. Vaughn with armor class yes. three, correct? Uh, okay. Uh, he, uh, Vaughn, manages to... Uh -huh. Duck it, right? This as this creature swings overhead, yeah. he ducks it, and then he comes over the top with this huge tree oh. as a mace. Oh, and he's and fortunately Vaughn manages to duck that as this you see it hit and pieces of yeah, the stone bridge, the bridge. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, exp ex <laughs> right explode as and this creature now both these heads mm -hmm. kind of look at each other. You know, I don't. You know, it's they're like yelling at each other. These two heads now are like arguing with each other. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Initiative round two. Oh. And go ahead and roll for Vaughn as I well. Got a, if you don't mind. If you don't want to run, I got Vaughn, a six again. Vaughn gets a three. I got a three also. Okay. Okay. Let me roll for the the Etten. Okay, two. My gosh. Oh, right. Okay, so you guys are jumping the so gun. So here's the good news, because <laughs> I shoot first, and I hit armor class negative one with this. Because that oh, hit a nice. 17 Roll your damage. on the dice. So I do uh, six points of damage, full damage on that arrow. It's nice. like, oh, I missed the first one. So I line it up so that I can hit nice. it. Nice. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and, and as you see this thing rage and hammer with its mace, uh, and you realize maybe right, it tightens your focus. Oh no no no. Uh -uh. Okay, right. It's like all of a yeah, sudden the first shot is too, too quickly. Dangerous. Right, I just threw the ball and yeah. fired, and yeah. it's like no no no. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right, right. The yeah. adrenaline now is starting to focus. You're starting to harness the adrenaline. Beautiful. Okay. So I go uh, down on one knee, steady my aim, bow nice. kind of sideways. And I rolled a total of uh, 15, so I hit armor class 3. Yes. Yep, you got Four. it. Damage. <laughs> nice. nice. Oh, so you're seeing arrows now. Hit it. It doesn't blink. I mean, it's like they're hitting. You can see them sticking this guy. Uh, but it ain't like he's mm -hmm. noticed it, right? Okay. All right, Vaughn now is on this unsteady boulder. It won't yeah. affect him, right? I mean, uh, it's unsteady. This thing just hit. So the boulder, the, what's left of this bridge mm -hmm. is rocking a little bit, but he's uh, he's clear to take his uh, melee or move if you want to move. Or... Uh, he needs to move first, or I mean, move step up before. Well, that's up to oh, you. Oh, okay. Uh, I think he takes a chance to attack, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. the ground is more unsteady than he accounted for, and so the pike, instead of thrusting where it's going, it just gets deflected <sighs> sideways. And right, uh, right. and nice. cannot connect properly, and Vaughn is starting. To and rise. he, yeah. you hear him forty meters away. You just hear him, but he's he's cursing in some strange language. You think <laughs> he's, he's cursing? Sure he's cursing. Certain, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. This this creature now looks down again. At this point, it reaches out with its left hand and looking for its club that mm. it had set in the river. Uh, splashing for that club. Meanwhile, with the other right hand club is coming down on Vaughn. Oh, and that's a hit. Ouch. Woo. 
that's a hit. Here we go. Okay, so Vaughn gets uh, seven, uh, eight points of oh damage. From Vaughn. This this big mace comes down, bam, and uh, you know with his shield takes everything he can. Maybe one foot slides off the broken bridge into the water as he's trying to stay on this rock. You hear him actually cry out, this this is huge strength, it's huge power. Uh, you see the Etten pull the other club up out of the water, and it's round three, gentlemen. Oh, we roll initiative. Oh. I got a four, and Vaughn gets another three. Got a five. One. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> God. Fortunately, this, oh, nice. Okay, so it looks yeah. like Eldrin, Martin, <clears throat> And Vaughn, and I rolled a one, good, so good. fortunately this thing is taking its time. Meanwhile, they're, they're not screaming. The heads weren't screaming at each other. One was looking for his club. The other head clobbered him, right? Okay. We, okay, we must not let that ready. brave stranger down. So I draw back uh, carefully, and uh, that's uh, this time it's, uh, again, exactly the same, 15. So it's armor class 3 okay. for two hits. Okay, nice. Another arrow. You guys are watching now as these arrows just take hold. You're probably not even far from center. It's like they're now starting to pile up in one spot as you don't uh, – you're not losing that focus, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Okay, yeah, Martin. so I, I start moving a bit closer. It's like we got to get closer to this thing. It's going to kill the, that, that man. So I, I move forward. I think if I'm – Reading it correctly, I can move 10 meters right. uh, in combat, right? Yes, so now I move to almost yep. uh, almost 30 meters. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's yeah. 31 um, meters. I'm just outside. Yep. Next round, I should be at medium range. So, you know, as, as okay. I'm going, I get as close as I can and, you know, stop for a moment to, to line up a shot uh, because I see the Etten maybe, like, lifting the club again. And so... Yep. That is a 12 plus 2 is 14. It's armor class 4. Oh, so somehow, mm -hmm. some way, as the moving with just, you mm -hmm. lost your spot as you moved up the bank and fired, having lost your yeah. target. Just, just missed. It. Missed, yeah. right? missed it by that much. Okay. Uh, All right. Yep. Yep. That move gains you ground, but just got your target, your, yeah, your yeah. sight off, right? Yeah, a lot of adrenaline here with this yeah. giant creature, right? And you've seen the destruction of the bridge and of the people he's already murdered. Okay, it's Vaughn's so turn. So I think Vaughn, you know, realizing what's going on, uh, I think he moves like to the to the uh, to, to the to the back side of the bridge, right? Because he was right next to the Etten. So he's he's not moving sideways right. to cross the bridge. He's moving to the other edge. Of the bridge, if that makes any sense. So he wants to, he wants to back exactly, he wants to back away. exactly back it away. Do you want him to fight? Uh, yes, it's like a fighting retreat and see if he can get some distance between okay. himself and the, and the. Okay, and that gives him a minus. Now, if you fight defensive, right, that gives you a minus two to AC. Or excuse me, plus two to your AC, but a minus right. forty to your Ooh, yeah. Right. So at least he gains yeah, an AC Yeah, I think he's going to try and do that, try and get away as far away from this guy as he can. Okay. Because uh, he sees the arrows coming in, and he's thinking maybe maybe he can chuck a, a hand axe at the thing. Uh, sure, sure. You know what? He's going to try and poke it with a pike as he's retreating, because he's at minus four anyway, right? Okay. So it's a net negative yes. three. And, oh, no, no, no way. He just, you know, jabs in front of him to, to keep the beast at bay, but nothing is really hitting as he just moves back. Okay. Nice. All right. <coughs> so he moves back uh, the full 10 mm -hmm. meters, right? That's as far as the bridge will allow. That he can move? Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, the, the, the bridge out to this apex, he broke mm. it down in the middle where it was the weakest. So probably... There's probably about another 10 meters to the shore. So it's about 20 meters of this yeah, okay. bridge left, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, on this side, I mean, right? So there's about 10 meters left to the shore. But he moved back 10 meters. Okay, so uh, the Etten, I'm going to roll here. Uh, 
one, two, three, or four, he's still mm -hmm. looking at Vaughn. Five, it would be yeah, yeah. one of you two, okay? Five or six. So there's still a one to four chance Vaughn is his target. Okay, Vaughn yeah. is his target. Uh, he doesn't really have to do much uh, because he can move 36 Oof. meters per step per turn. So he just has to take mm -hmm. half a step to yeah, close okay. that gap. Uh, but he's at armor class one yeah. now, right? Because of the defensive move. Okay. And that may be enough to keep him alive. We'll see. But he comes around first with the heavy right hand uh -huh. branch. 19. Uh, that's going to hit, right? Uh, I bet. Uh, 19. Six oh. points of damage. Yeah. That ain't too so bad. he's down to seven. Yeah. And the other, uh, the, the the other side, at now you know, gurgling and laughing, comes around underneath with the left hand. Oh, and misses! Thank God for the defensive posture because it oh, missed nice. by two. So that worked. So uh, he hits him so hard with the right that the second hand again can't find its. Uh, and again, you see the two heads pivot to each other, and they're they're like snarling and barking at each other like you fool you know you don't know what it's saying to itself but it's talking to itself <laughs> right whoo round four <laughs> the one thing you've really had advantage here is has been two two for me again uh, it's hey. been uh five nice eldrin oh now everybody's at two <laughs> i rolled two two <laughs> okay okay well, I'll let you guys all go first because it's just easier to track. Okay. So what are you doing there, I'm, Aldrin? I'm, I'm moving forward to back up uh, Martin and, and shooting as I move. And I okay. hit armor class one this time. Woo, nice damage. Okay. This plus three Woo. bonus to hit is a huge asset. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. wonderful, isn't yeah. it? Isn't it wonderful? Right? Makes you feel like uh, makes you Rangers. feel like you're yeah. qualified, right? You know why you're yeah. the one doing this job, now, right? <laughs> Versus the halfling who's hiding in the dirt. <laughs> All right, Martin, 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 All right, so and Vaughn. Martin, Next. Nice. Uh, moves a, a little bit further, right? So now he's probably within range. So he moves. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'll keep it fair. I'll move 10 meters, right? So I'm well inside okay. the, uh, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the normal yeah, uh, just, range. Yep. Uh, yep. And you've moved within, you moved within one step of him. However, you were within one step yeah, of well, him last much. time, but he targeted yeah. uh, Vaughn. Uh, yeah. let's see. Short bow is 15 meters. No, okay. So I just moved 10. So I would be like at 21 meters or so. Uh, you okay. are. Yep, you're 21. Actually, he moved forward 10. Uh-uh, he moved forward 10 oh. to catch up the the range. So he's actually at 11 okay. meters. Okay, that's excellent because now he's at short range. And so that gives me yes. an extra plus one. And so now it right. is a total of, for me, it's plus four to hit. So I right. hit armor class one. Nice. And yep. he takes damage, five sir. points of damage from that. Ooh, nice. Now he's starting to get – you're starting to get mm -hmm. his attention. Uh, these two arrows take purchase maybe in the neck of one of the heads or something, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that head turns now, and, and, and it, 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 this is the left head, left arm. It's now looking in mm -hmm. your direction, uh, uh, Martin, that, that head. Uh, meanwhile, the other head's still focused on Vaughn. Uh, now, yeah. Vaughn, uh, your go, sir. Yeah, Vaughn throws a hand axe at the uh at nice. the uh but unfortunately it goes spinning over. <laughs> and okay. uh uh oh. you know, I think it just maybe it hits with like the blunt end uh instead of hitting with the right. biting it bounces it, it off bounces of bounces off the right. forehead and it's like, oh. yeah. he hits it but not with not the blade, blade, right? Yeah. Yes, nice. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make a check here. Uh, morale is not a problem for this creature. As it looks at you, Martin, mm -hmm. by the way, this left head, uh, when you when you put two, you guys put arrows in its shoulder and neck on this side, its head pivots to you, and you see plainly now as this thing opens its mouth, its fangs slobbering, it's angry, 
you see its eyes are shadowed. Oh. Uh, again, it's it's almost like his eyes are in some kind of mist, shadowed, similar to the quality of that that dark mist that you saw over the lamps mm -hmm. in the Daros uh, two or three days ago, yeah. right? His eyes are actually shrouded in this kind of uh, mist, right? And he's raging. Uh, I'm going to make a quick check. There's no morale problem for this. It is actually, due to this condition, he's not going to be phased by damage, but but he may fight with himself. Ooh, no. And indeed, uh, they turn to each other and they're fighting about who to attack. This this left head wants desperately to go after Martin. The the other head is faced on Vaughn. Uh, the, uh, the 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 main focus of it is still going to try to hit Vaughn, but he'll be at a minus because he's fighting okay. with himself. Okay, so. Uh, Oh, and because of that, misses Oof. by one. So this this big mace comes down with the right side again. Bam, right at the feet of uh, – and, you know, he's maybe – he throws this hand axe, backs up two I steps, and further. bam, this hits. And this creature now is, like, barking at itself and the, while he's swinging his club in your direction, but he's too far to, to hit you. Uh, all right, we are at round five. However, every round I'm going to make a roll to see if it gets – if one of these heads wins – and focuses yeah. again, right? Okay. This is going to affect his initiative because he's fighting with himself. Okay. Uh, one, one for me as for well. Me. Uh, but Ooh. three for Bond. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Bond's so Bond's first. first. So, uh, uh, yeah. Yep, Eldrin. Vaughn sees... And the Vaughn end. sees that it's fighting, and so he decides to take the opportunity to rush forward with a pike once more because he's out of melee weapons. Okay. And yeah, uh, his armor class is reduced by one while he's in this uh, art, you know, the state mm -hmm. where he's fighting with himself. Okay, so he rolls okay. and hits. He's got just a plus one, right? So, so he yes, sir. He hits armor class yep. four. Oh, that hits though because this oh, thing is nice. fighting with itself. So it's armor class. Nice. Lower well, he one. does two points of damage from the pike. So I guess the pike okay. graces uh, with the. the uh... Is that is that also including the? Yes, it's a roll of one, one and the dice plus one is two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Okay, but at least he's able to find purchase in the ribs of yeah. this creature, right? All right. Nice. Okay, uh, Eldrin, it is your go. Good job, Vaughn. Vaughn got a hit now, on this thing. Question. Right? Question. Um, Sir. Actually, two questions. Uh, one is uh, tactical. Is is there a way that we can approach him close enough for melee on the shore, or is he still too far in the water for us to get to him with melee? You would. You could. You could. He's so he's straddling where he busted the bridge down. Uh, both. Uh, yeah. uh, Vaughn is on the bridge. He has not retreated to the shore. So they're still on the top of the bridge. So you can run up the bridge, right, yeah. and be up there on the bridge. Uh -huh. There's, remember, so there, the bridge comes in the center. He busted down the middle of the bridge, and there's still two oh, yeah, yeah, going like pieces this. all Is there. Vaughn? Right. And so Vaughn, Vaughn didn't run all the way to the shore. He just ran down halfway, 10 meters down. There's still 10 meters to go to and, get to the shore. Vaughn and is Vaughn on again. our side of the shore? Okay. Cool. He is on the east cool. side okay. of the bridge. So, yeah. so uh, uh, Eldran kind of, I, I just kind of mutter, <laughs> I cannot let this brave man die. And he drops, uh, I drop my bow, draw my sword, and mm -hmm. since I'm within charging range, I'm going to charge. Oh, oh nice. nice. So plus two to hit, but I think it's an right. AC hit, right? Yeah, nice. yeah. so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trading off switching weapons for my plus two to hit. Nice. Right. And, awesome. And, oh, that's brilliant. So, that's he, brilliant. so yes. uh, I, 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 you know, lo, you know, spring like a deer to quote Tolkien for the mark. Yes. Nice. And I rolled a nineteen on the die. Oh, so, damage! Because that's, that's like armor class minus hits. four or something. Yeah. And so <laughs> that. Yeah. Uh oh. He uh, how much? I'm bit. sorry. Six. Six. Nice. Okay, this thing now, uh -huh. both heads. You got the, they're fighting with each other. You got the attention of both heads, sir. Oh, All right. 
and it roars. Bring Roar. it. It is, it is madder than hell with that. Okay. Nice. Okay. And it has, you have its full attention, yeah. unfortunately, though. So I okay, say, Mark oh, no, 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 focus here. And I shoot, a, I shoot another <laughs> arrow at the back of its head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fortunately, it's the beast, uh, the, the, the tide is too thick. The, the skins it's wearing, and so the arrow bounces oh, off. Okay. Uh, All right. Uh, so you've got this creature's full attention with that, sir. Uh, and he roars, and the, the, the left head side, you know, is already was wanting to attack Martine. And when you hit it in the whatever you did, ribs, shoulder, whatever, from the top of the bridge, it swings first with its left backhand in your direction. Uh, Twelve. Uh, I don't know. Oh, wait, what is his Four. Your, your AC is? Okay, that's a hit. So he hits you with a left hand. Okay, gird your loins, my friend. This is this is this is brutal. Two, three, four, five, Ouch. six points of damage. Yeah. That's not too Ouch. bad. Uh, and then comes over the top with the right, just roaring. And again, you guys both now see all four, you know, all four heads in this thing, uh, all four eyes in this thing are clouded with this shadow as it as it kind of moves. It's in their eyes. It's not over his eyes. It's in his eyes, right? This. This black shadow pulses through his, reflected in his eyes. Oh, 19 with that. Oh, gosh. Hold on yeah. tight, Eldrin. Two, three, four, five. Uh, five points. So, so I'm nice and battered. So he backhands you and then comes over the top. And the bridge, I mean, it hits you so hard, you actually see the end of the mate of, of a tree. Pieces of this tree are breaking apart. He's so mad with that last attack. Yeah. Okay, round oh six. <laughs> I love it. Four. Ooh. All right. Uh, oh, I got to roll. Yeah. One. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. I might yeah. as well just we go. might as well just go, and then you, you, you go last. But yeah, right. Vaughn, uh, witnessing this brave warrior come to his rescue, Vaughn goes first, and he, you know, he sees that oh, the, nice. the Eppin is is you know it's it's uh, attacking this poor guy right raging and so he hits armor class zero uh Ooh, and nice. does a total of five points of damage so he takes the opportunity that the Ooh. the etten has just like turned its head and just tries to go for the neck with the uh with the right. with the pike thrusting with the pike uh and it and that mm -hmm. right head right because now as he reached over for Edrin, that would have mm -hmm. opened up the right mm -hmm. head's neck, right? So he drives it into its neck, and it, it rages. Its eyes roll back, and, you know, is, is now coming up looking at Vaughn. That right head and arm are coming up mm -hmm. looking at Vaughn. Okay, Martin. Martin. No, I'm last. It's it's Eldrin Woo. now. Oh, yeah. Eld I'm sorry, Eldrin. Excuse me. Oh, I, I natural him. 20. Oh, oh double oh, the really? damage. Really? So, yeah, uh, two dice, right? This okay. has double damage, doesn't it? So I, I roll the dice yeah. twice, or I I'm multiply pretty... times two. No, you uh, you you get to roll the dice twice, but you right. don't get to add your strength right. bonus twice. So, right? yeah. all right. So Ooh, this hey, is what result, I'm picturing. Result of the damage roll will be multiplied by two. Oh, oh it page yeah. forty-two. Okay, page forty-two. Yeah. Yes. All right. So, so this is okay, this good. is what I picture. You know, I got. You know, hammered back, you know, twice on one knee, yep. and he kind of shakes his head. And this is and you're gonna and you're gonna kill it. This, so is, go this ahead. is Eloy. Now this tell this, the story, is, this brother. is is Eloy's fault. All right, <laughs> because of something he posted the other day. So so I get you know knocked back, you know, twice down on one knee, and I see mm -hmm. and, and I I think I'm gonna die. Shake my head, and then uh, Vaughn distracts it. So basically, I lift my front of both hands, and I, from one knee, I take, you know, some impulse, and I jump up, Lotus War style. So I jump, and I nice. bring, try to bring my sword between the two heads. <laughs> nice. And oh. I actually hit for 15 hits. Oh. oh, he only had three left, so that'll give you an idea how bad that yeah. hit was. Oh, minus 12. <laughs> So this thing, like it's, they both, both heads yeah. turn away from each other and scream out. They're splurting blood and, and saliva and snot. 
as it as it wells and it drops into it, onto its knees. Both arms go dead, and you see these heads kind of one the other, and then it hits the side of the bridge, and it's like leaning against the bridge as the heads are like on the what's left of the and, bridge. And I, I imagine me trying to like pulling my sword out, like about to swing again before I realize it's dead. Uh, <laughs> oh my! By Valiant! Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Holy how, how many cow. hit points do you have left, uh, Eldrin? Fifteen. Oh, okay. You're you're better off. Vaughn is in bad shape. He's got like seven hit points left. Yep. So. It's like, are you well, Ooh. warrior? Uh, uh, yeah. He uh, he stands up and he says something in such thick accent. I think you don't he's quite know, Martin. Something. We must look the... for a head wound. Yeah. <laughs> I have. <laughs> it's something to the effect. It's something to the effect that, ah, that's a good way to start lunch. <laughs> so. He spits yeah. blood. You know, you see now that his arm is badly uh, yeah. from his shield. You know, he drop, puts his shield down. You see that it's badly bruised from that club shot. He's holding it kind of, uh, you know, uh, up against his chest. Spits blood, but he's got a smile on his face. Teeth are red with mm -hmm. fresh blood. Uh, his hair is bright red and curly, right? He's a ginger. He's got a beard, ginger beard, uh, probably 28, 29. And he stands on the bridge looking out over the river at the bodies that are floating and the, the wagon that was destroyed and pitched into the river, the, the bridge that's destroyed. And, and just looks over this this carnage and looks back at the creature and then at you two and uh, – is in disbelief, I just kind of have head. you know, like the tip of my sword on the bridge stone, leaning on the pommel, kind of breathing hard still, yeah. trying to yeah. process Martin, the pain. Martin comes running up, right, having <laughs> catching up finally. And uh, I see you're injured, uh, but you're still standing. So, ah, uh, this is nothing. This is nothing. And then he tries to move his hand. You see him physically uh, wince. All right, maybe it's something. And he sits down on the bridge, uh, you know, and, uh, and and looks up at you. In my pack, there at the foot of the bridge, I've got some arnica. If you would please, yeah, I'll bring that here, to here, me. have some, and I'll I'll just give him one of mine. Uh, okay, so make a dice six check for me, and we'll see how much he gets. Is it dice, dice, dice six? I'll, I'll be dice I'll be throwing mine, one of my own, applying it to yeah. my. Yeah. So, so he bruises. gets four points back. Okay, so in the next over the next four turns, yeah. he'll get all four of those yeah. back, right? As he digests. And I got three. Yeah. Whew. I was nervous about this potential fight. Well, th thanks to Vaughn keeping him off us for a few rounds. Yeah. So we could yeah. prep for him. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. Uh, I, well, I won't spoil. No, no spoilers. Uh, spoilers. No, spoilers. no, it's uh... <laughs> but, but, you know, this is this is one of the things where, like, I don't want to hold us up here, but the last time we played BX and we rolled for, like, encounter distance, and then you start understanding the yep. difference between having the encounter yep. in your face in melee and having him, you know, pull yep. over and we'll just start yep. shooting a couple of times, at least twice. That's if you can right. shoot him one or twice, yep. you've gotten softened up by yep. the time he gets to you to melee. So, yep. You know. I had rolled, there were two potential ways you could encounter this creature, and I had already pre-rolled the distance that you Excellent. would encounter it. So this on the river was 42 Excellent. meters. On the road would have been 21 oh, okay. Ooh, meters. Still good. Yeah. Oh, this is better. <laughs> right? Those, potential chance to, to meet it. And again, you might not have met it if something yeah. else had occurred earlier. But cool. It, so okay. so I, I, I'll scream uh, for... All right. uh, Master Wilfred, uh, to pull the canoe over, and we'll we'll get a fire going or something, and get this man some food, and maybe yeah. boil some arnica, and 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 give him a second okay. helping of that. Uh, yeah. And as as you do that, and, and he begins to help you with make fire, he starts wading out into the river best he can as a little man, trying to pull some of these bodies out mm. of the water. And again, there's blood. The water is unfortunately discolored with blood in some of this yeah. where he, these things just pulverize these people. Uh, he pulls as many as he can to the east shore. Are there uh, any other survivors? You know, all the time. Not okay. that you've seen okay. yet. Right? There may have been some on the other side oh, of the, the west river, bank. on yeah. the west side, but 
Uh, on this side, it looks as though this side took the worst of it, right? As far as where bodies ended up. Um, from this side, if you climb to the top of the bridge, you might be able to see the angle down on the right on the west side and see if there are bodies in the river. But on, from from the bank, you can't see if there's bodies right. on the other side of the river. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense, right? It's it's too far, right? But he's pulling what he can out. Uh, some of the bodies may have floated away. Uh, there's a wagon that has been destroyed. There's blocks of this stone bridge that it had already ripped What's apart. This? Yeah. Uh, he then mumbles something as he pulls him out. He he uh, says some prayers to Valen, uh, oh, yeah. Valian, excuse me, Valian, and uh, he begins to uh, 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 well, he 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 basically storms the. He in it kind of in uh, a fit of uh, melancholy. He was, he's pacing sure. east yeah. uh, away from your yeah. camp, right? He just he pulled them off shore and then he mumbled some things and said some prayers to Valiant. And now he's kind of pacing the east bank, uh, talking to himself. This little half. Okay, so we'll we'll shout across the bank to see if there's people on the on the western end right to see if there's anybody there any survivors yeah. are you injured uh you hear a faint reply and then as you see something top the at the top of the other mm -hmm. side of the bridge where it broke loose you see a, a a figure uh and she waves and she yells uh it's uh, i'm the only one my 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 family's been murdered she's pointing down the river like they may have been Carried Float, off. You know, they yeah. may have been carried off, yeah. and she appears to be middle aged yeah. or older. So I'll say, uh, right. I resemble uh, that remark. Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell, I'll tell Derry, you know, Master <laughs> Derry, perhaps we'll, we should, we should move over to the West Bank and uh, make our camp a uh, small camp there. Uh, let let us not leave this okay. uh, injured this woman alone. He is he he appears to not hear you. He's mumbling to himself. He's mm -hmm. he's pacing. He doesn't acknowledge that he's that mm. he's heard you. So I'll you know I'll I'll Master I'll, Boldman. Yeah, yell over at the woman. We'll come to you. Go back on shore. Yeah. Uh, he he stops and looks up when he hears his name or hears Boatman, and then he realizes you've yelled something, and he turns. Uh, you see, he's yeah. he's been. He's, he's been crying, uh, shaking his head. Uh, you can see there's a faraway look in his eye of, of utter. He's just he's, yeah, he's lost, distraught. Yeah. You know he's lost in he's lost in. Uh, so I, morning, I squeeze right? his shoulder and I said, "There's a lone woman on the other side. She lost her family. You must we must row over and and make our camp there so we can lick her wounds and see if she needs help." Yes, yes, and he, he mumbles to himself, and he goes over, and he climbs, and pushes on the boat, trying to push it into the river. Uh, of course, it doesn't move very far. It's loaded yeah. down with stuff. Uh, and as you as you help him push it into the water, he climbs in and begins to steer it and paddle it across. Um, is this Vaughn? You're not going to be able to get oh, all okay. three of you in it. I mean, uh, where would Vaughn be? Well, you could, but you have to dump all of his gear yeah, in the middle okay. of the canoe. Uh, what we'll do is, so you could fit all three of you, but you're gonna have to dump yeah, all. We'll of that take we'll baggage. take turns and say just yeah. go on ahead, go on ahead with with him. You're wounded. Okay. I'll wait on the east bank until they can come get me. Okay. All right. Yeah. So Vaughn and Eldrin and the halfling cross, and uh, 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 Eldrin and Vaughn climb out. The halfling then paddles over against this. Fortunately, it's wider here, but it's slower here. He's able to get across without much problem. The boat's lighter now that two men have climbed off of it, so it's a little tougher to keep from floating. So it loses mm -hmm. a little, you know, it it actually floats downstream a little bit as he gets it across. So you're going to have to walk about 15 meters. Yeah, I'll do. I'll, him. I'll start walking uh, he, downstream to compensate. Yeah. And then he, uh, you help him paddle across. Uh, and again, Eldrin and Vaughn, uh, you you see this woman. She meets you on the bank. She's a human, uh, uh, probably in her late 40s, early 50s. Uh, she has been clearly weeping and crying. Uh, she tells you that uh, her and her family were traveling uh, to uh, asylum uh, with their wagon, and uh, they had uh, two other wagons with them, and they were they were devastated. Their family's wagon and all their 
belongings were uh, uh, floated away mm -hmm. downstream. Um, she points to uh, to some of the other dead here that she went out, waited out, and pulled up on shore, uh, just weeping. She said, "It came, it came from the Blue Mountains. It came down and crossed the road and was over uh, under the bridge, waylaying, and then it dropped off and started tearing the." boulders out of the bridge and, and flinging people and rocks and she's just weeping telling you the story of this Etna coming out of the mountains so it went straight from the bridge it went straight to the bridge yes yeah, rather I should that should mm -hmm. yeah and this is that yeah, little yeah. bridge there uh yeah. Eloy on the map yeah. that we were talking yeah. about it that's was this sent bridge. to do so it was sent to do so that's my that's my concern and it seems to be dividing both banks it yeah. And all all this woman's wagons were lost, right? All, all the wagons? Yeah. Yes. They had one wagon with her husband and her children and their belongings that was lost. She said she when it when it destroyed it and flipped it into the river, she came off the wagon and was able to swim to the shore, but everybody else was lost mm. down river. I mean her best guess is they're dead. Maybe they're not. They may just be you know Somewhere yeah, downriver, yeah. you know, on the banks. But she thinks they were killed. She's certain they were killed, but she doesn't. How far she... are we from asylum on foot? Oh, well, you still have four days travel. Well, to get to the Sinister Glen, two days travel. And then two days travel from Sinister Glen, which is where you're going, to asylum. So another four days total to get to asylum. But you're two days from Sinister Glen, which is, which is what the which is what the Duke had told you that he was having trouble at Sinister Glen. Yeah, well now now we have this this lady to take care of. Um, now my know, my no, thought is to send the lady with Master Wilford here straight on the boat to Asylum, while we and this warrior uh, could take the road on foot um, and make it down south. Uh, I guess the alternative is turning back to Robles. Vaughn speaks up. I, I am hurt. Uh, I could stay with the lady and escort her back up to wow. Rublida. I think it's safer if I take her to Rublida. That is true. Then trying to go. If, 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 if there's something happening in the sinister woods and there's something here in the mountains... I don't know if we should drag that in that is true. direction. That is true. He's got a point. But but whatever you uh, you two want. I think uh, I think that is brave of you. Uh, that's brave of you, sir. Um, I am Vaughn App Wallace, by the way, and he 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 nods. Mm. As you may have guessed, I am not from your country. Uh, yeah, I am indeed. Martin Valinor, and this is my friend Eldran Astorian of the Eastmark Rangers. Mm. He he reaches out to give you a warrior's handshake right. up to the elbow, uh, and then shakes Martin's hand. Ah, uh, you two fight bravely. I am I am proud to have met you, and you have saved my life. To be quite honest, well, with you. I would have lasted two minutes with that creature. Well, uh, if you can take this woman to Robleda and bring word uh, to the Duke of what has transpired here. Tell him that uh, Talonvor and Asturian, uh, the rangers of the Mark, have sent you. Uh, here is some money for the road, and I'm sure the, the Duke will uh, reward you for your, for your efforts. So I'll give him five pieces of gold. Uh, uh, yeah, he he, he Takes your hand and pushes uh, that away. Who, what kind of man do you think I am to take your gold to escort a woman to to civilization? Did I, I? I must have made a bad impression upon you. Keep your gold. That now, is a noble gesture, friend. Yeah. Master Vaughn, when when you speak, uh, when you get to uh, Robleta, if you can at all speak to the Duke, tell him you have a message from Rangers Valinor and uh, and Asturian. Tell him that this giant was sent like Penumbra, was sent by Penumbra, just like in the East. Mm. 
I will. I don't know what you refer to, but Give I will him, tell him exactly. Tell those words so Duke will know what it means. Yes, yes. Anything else, uh, you uh, you noble uh, men would like me to? Uh, anyone else you want me to speak to? No, I believe that should be enough. Uh, I think that should be enough, but uh, uh, we should return to Robleda so, in uh, perhaps a fortnight. Uh, look for us there. At the do we have do we have a place yes. like at the, the, like at the garrison or something? Oh, yeah, the grazing oh, council yeah. headquarters. Yeah. Uh, and now the duke has made you lieutenant. Yeah. Uh, you know, you stayed with in the duke's. Yeah. You stayed in the duke's pa palace yeah. for, or castle for the last three or four days, waiting for all this. But yeah, the grazing council. You would have actually still have quarters yeah. at the grazing council, which is right next to the duke's castle. Right. According to the book, right. Uh, so yes, you do have a place. At you the know what we should council. do? We should tell them. Uh, uh, meet us in a fortnight at uh, a tavern, and we'll give him a, the name of a tavern. Uh, uh, okay. The golden. If we Eagle. haven't. Yeah, the golden eagle. If we haven't, if we haven't golden returned, Eagles. then uh, have a drink uh, in our names. Have a drink at our name. Yeah. <laughs> I I um absolutely. So I will speak to the duke, and I will meet you in a fortnight at the Golden Eagle, and I will I will gladly. Uh, 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 love to break bread with you. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to rest here with this woman tonight and, and leave early in the morning. So he he still sets a camp there off the road, in, uh, um, somewhat sheltered in the trees under the foothills. There he makes a place that he thinks he can be safe off the road, and he uh, he, he he shares his rations with the woman. Um, and of course, you're of course uh, he makes it clear you can join him at your camp for the night. Of course, but. He's going to rest before he leaves for rebel, rebel, Robleda, uh, yeah. Robleda, right? Robleda. So he makes camp. The uh, halfling uh, is, is slowly coming out of his stupor as he buries the bodies that she drug out of the water on this side. He spends the remainder of, of the day burying yeah. bodies, unless you command him otherwise. Uh, I guess we'll give him a hand. That yeah. seems like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, so you bury the the bodies. Of, you don't know who these people are. So you, you you know who knows, right? How to you you at least gave them a burial, right? Said something, and uh, you uh, uh, the the halfling and uh, says something um, over their bodies, and you uh, bury them. Um, do you want to camp here, or you want to try to make up ground, make up time? I think we should rest because we don't know what's. Uh, I could use a little rest and then. Okay. We can uh, set up early in the morning. True. Safety in okay. numbers. Yeah. What's All resting right. do for you here? Uh, I believe it's. Oh, where's the book? Damage and healing. Uh, I believe it's one hit, one hit point. Oh, hang on. Each day of rest, 1d4 hit points are recovered. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Good. Oh, yeah. Okay, so make. Make a roll for Vaughn. And remember, Vaughn got four back for already Arnica. for the yeah. Arnica. And then one die four for his night's sleep. Hey. Oh, so I'm back up. I took two Arnica and the sleep. I'm back up to four. Yeah. Uh, Va nice. Vaughn gets two nice. back. So he's up to 13. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, Out of 21. Whew, yeah. He's still hurt, boy. Good. That first blow was eight points, so he's still got to recover he, that first he blow. Took two he took thirds yeah. of his of his hit points in damage, so yep. it was pretty harsh. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, you sleep well. No traffic along the road at all uh, during the night. Um, very strange, especially coming up. Toward the big city from Asylum or from the Sinister Glen, nothing, no traffic yeah. at all. Uh, whatever traffic you would think might have been coming down the road, mm -hmm. nothing. Um, there may have been traffic on the other side of the uh, of the Willow Creek, but uh, you can't tell from this side. But nothing during the rest of the day, nothing through the night. But you all, uh, you managed to get your rest. You managed to get up and around uh, again. Bright and early, the halfling has you up. It's just natural for him. He's 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 loaded what he can in the boat. Uh, he has said his goodbyes to Vaughn and the woman. Uh, he actually gives the woman something, uh, slips something to the woman, 
and then he walks over to you and sheepishly looks and says, I had to send a note to my wife just in case things get worse. And then he and then he climbs in the boat. Probably wise, Master Wilfred. Uh, so I say to Eldrin, Eldrin, uh, get some rest. I'll I'll take care of the boat today with Master Wilfred. Uh, take care of those injuries. Uh, just let me know if you need a, a breather. I will. Be, I should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so back on the river, uh, much like the first day, uh, beautiful. You don't see much travelers on either side of the river which is a little strange, especially on the west side, right? You would expect that major thoroughfare mm-hmm. to have more traffic. There's mm-hmm. none, zero. Uh, you uh, uh, pilot through the whole day. He, uh, uh, you know, he, he again, he parks on the east side. Unless you no. want to park on the west side, he'll ask east. you where you want to park. Uh, set camp. You uh, get through the uh, the night there, no problem. So fully healed if you need to, to heal at yeah, all. But I fine. think you're already fully healed. Uh, but We'll need to use rations, um, as he has not been in the mood to fish. He has been – he your little friend has changed his tune completely. He's awake mm-hmm. the whole time, stern-faced. His hat is uh, not pulled over his eyes. He is uh, – he steers the boat with a deliberate a deliberate uh, attitude, and uh, he is not fishing. So it will require a day's worth of rations for yeah, this right. night. This is best, okay. and we'll make no camp. We'll make no fire tonight. Sleep, huddle. Cold your, camp. Yeah, cold camp tonight. And, oh. um, and then uh, again, next morning, he beats you awake maybe. I don't know. Rangers, you guys might be one of those that are always up with the with the cold, right? As it gets a little brisk, you wake up and you're ready to go. I don't know how you guys are about Did that. Did we but, see any lights um, or anything at night in the forest? Or I mean, have, we haven't reached the glen yet. We're just through the mountains, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, you've got uh, one more day to get to the glen, what's called Glen Bay, which is right at the okay. curve there before the sinister glen, right? I don't have okay. my map up, but if I remember right, there's a little curve there. And they refer okay. to it as Glen Bay. Right or Asylum mm-hmm. Bay, right? Um, but no, you haven't seen any traffic on the east or west. That doesn't mean there wasn't. It just it wasn't visible or uh, you know uh, during your camp. Yeah. Okay. Um, you haven't heard anything. Uh, you haven't heard any you know anything strange other than the normal sounds. <coughs> of the so uh, whatever and why ever uh, is going on on that west side, it ha- doesn't appear to be. Uh, it doesn't appear to be um, uh, overly, active uh, or you know, yeah, right? Active, right? right? It might be high, okay. the, but there's right. no fires in the, right. in the in the in the, in the night that we can see. No campfires, nothing like nope. that. Nope. Good. Good. Okay. Nope. Uh, back in the boat again. He's very. He's a little more relaxed today, but he doesn't fish. He's still awake. He's watching. Uh, this clearly. Uh, he was taking the river for granted. He'd never seen anything like that in his life. You can get from this experience that it's changed mm-hmm. right now, his attitude about safety. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, half a day's ride, you see as you come around a bend, uh, you're about another you know, few hours from where you think you're going according to the halfling as he tells you. You start to see along the western bank tents. From here they look like tents. They look like uh, – mm-hmm. And again, I have a screenshot. Uh, they, they look like tents. As you uh, continue to float through the day, he's kind of steering closer to the east side. You know, he's, he's thinking, okay, I don't know what that is, but he's, he's, he's keeping the boat more on yeah, the east side yeah. of the river. And as you get closer within a few hundred yards or a few hundred meters and then a few, you know, maybe within a hundred meters, you see there are, uh, there are uh, people moving about. You see tents. Uh, and you see, uh, you see uh, a gentleman who appears to be in a cape. Uh, there's a, there are flags of, of heraldry. The the halfling says that's Lord mm. Wainwright's heraldry. That that uh, the the lion and the and the gold shield. That's 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 Wainwright. And then these uh, these tents are in gold and blue, like his heraldry. You see uh, mostly women running around. You see tents, and you see a handful of uh, men. Stripped to their waist, sitting by the side of the river. Uh, they're bandaged. You can see as you start to float by, you can see they're bloodied and bandaged. Like this is almost a infirmary. An, an I think we infirmary. should pull pull up here, Master Boatman. 
I think this will fulfill your, uh, your, your contract. Yes, and that's Lord Wainwright. Yes, uh, he starts uh, paddling and steering that way. As you get closer, some of these guys stand. They, they've got impromptu crutches. They start moving along the shore. You hear one of them yell back, uh, Lord, company. And you see coming out of one of the tents, uh, uh, you know, uh, this, this guy with a cape and a helmet. And, he's, and he walks down toward the shore. I Who be you as you float terrible. into shore? <laughs> <laughs> and it, palm out. Who be you? Uh, this is my land. I am Lord Wainwright. Uh, Who greetings, Lord Wainwright. Uh, uh, we are rangers of the mark and have been sent to you uh, by Duke... Uh, uh, Regis is his name? I forget his name. Regin uh, Brad. Brad. We are, we are emissaries uh, sent to you by uh, King uh, by Duke uh, Regin Brad of Robleda. Ah, come. We have much to talk. Where's the rest of the army? Sent no army, my lord. Just us. Just you. Well, come. Tell me, and I will tell you, uh, and he yells back, uh, Penelope, get them refreshments and food. Halfling, how good to see you again. He reaches out and pats the halfling patronizingly on the top of the head. Um, and the, the halfling just rolls his eyes, you know, who is this guy? Uh, come, come to my head, my tent. And he walks you through this. And now you're seeing these are soldiers. They've been, um, uh, there's also a, uh, bodies laid out that are dead. Uh, you can see some of them are wounded. And then some of these tents are soldiers that mm -hmm. are clearly dying. Uh, as you follow him, he says, he points them out and he tells you that this is what's left of his knights and his army. We have, we have been outmatched and this is why I needed help from the Duke. Come in. And he brings you in. He tells Penelope, this is my daughter. She used to be wed, uh, two days ago, but she has had to come here to help me tend my men. His, her, her, uh, uh fiance is awaiting me at the castle in asylum. And uh, he says, get refreshments. She leaves. Uh, his uh, men in waiting, they shut the, uh, uh, the the curtains of the tent and leave you alone with the Lord. Have a Thank seat. Thank you, my Lord. I, I believe uh, Duke Regenbrand uh, was uh, not clear on the nature of your summons for aid. And thus he sent us to investigate matters further. What What has transpired here, my Lord? I, we have come across some evil creatures, some kind of water lizard fishmen or something. They are in the Sinister Glen, and they have been waylaying travelers. We came up here to rout them and run them out of my lands, out of the Sinister Glen. And as you can see, we have lost. They are, and he, he, uh, he says, I will show you one of the bodies of these creatures uh, once we have refreshments. Um I don't know where they come from. We have tried desperately to find them in the Glen. They are clever. They hide. They waylay us. Uh, and we, we have been no match. My knights have been devastated. your men had never fought such monsters before, my lord? Never have we seen anything like this. And I will I venture to gamble. You have not seen anything like this. And, 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 and more importantly, we cannot find their lair mm. in the Glen. Well, we would like to take a look at these creatures as well as to speak to any of your men who may have survived direct contact with these beings. Yes. Uh, and we have one other problem. We had, we had retained a troop of halfling acrobats and performers for my, my daughter Penelope's wedding. Uh, it, uh, they, one of my men had told us that they had run from these creatures through the glen on the west side of the road. And they are in the far west portion of the forest in the glen. We cannot find them, for we can't cross through the glen without being waylaid mm -hmm. by these creatures. But if we can find and rescue these, this halfling troop, that would be, that would be, uh, uh, well... It would be very important. Too. And we cannot let them die in any case, at least without trying. Mayhap uh, we can we can move stealthily through this glen and spirit them out yes. where and where we, force of arms cannot achieve the rescue. And I am afraid we bear, yeah. bear ill news as well. Uh, the bridge to the north 
uh, across the Willow Creek, uh, lies uh, in ruins. A giant, a two-headed giant from the Blue Hills uh, uh, waded into the river and laid waste to the bridge. That is too bad. The Duke will have to get that fixed, but that is not my concern. I have far greater of course, worries here. I, merely, I, I was merely concerned yes. for the safety of your camp being here at the foothills of the Blue Hills themselves. You might, you might post yes, sentries I, I would to look for the hills as well. <laughs> yes. Uh, he leans forward and says, yes, the problem is you have seen what's left of my entire my entire army. Well, this is... And don't tell me how inadequately uh, provisioned or how inadequately I've prepared an army. Don't tell me. But this is this is lesson learned. I must I must create a greater force in future. Perhaps my 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 son-in-law, my future son-in-law, will provide some of that. Where 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 does your uh, uh, future son-in-law hail from, my lord? Ah, he is Uma Ahmed. He is a vis Visertan noble. Oh. Visertan. Indeed. Uh, yes. Yes, I know. Yes. Tra they're traditional enemies. I'm yes, glad and, to hear that there's some peace along the border. Yes, I'm. I'm hoping this. This. I'm. Ho he leans in and smiles. I'm hoping my daughter has purchased me some. Uh, well, let's say future treaty with them. Always a wise move, my lord. Uh. What are these? What are these devil men that you have seen? Uh, t t uh, Come, let me let me show you. So he takes you out, the and they've had they've got, yeah. He uh, he says, "Follow me." Stands uh, and takes you out. He takes you to near the shore and uh, to two bodies. Uh, both of them uh, badly. Uh, uh, obviously, they've lost in their fat. These are two of their victims. Uh, they are uh, clearly huh? finned. Uh, they have gills. They have. Uh, they have, and they're large. They're bigger than you are. They're musc. They're muscular. Uh, they look like a lizard slash amphibious type beast, humanoid. Two arms, two legs, okay. fins, uh, and they're tall. Um, uh, they okay. look pretty. Uh, pretty. You know, you've never seen anything like it. You might not have even heard of anything. Like okay. This. I kneel down uh, in front of one of the bodies, and I. I prop open one of its eyes. I want to look at its eyes. Mm -hmm. What color are they? They are uh they are what? they are misted. Misted. Okay. Right? They are they look like there's some kind of mist or uh fog in the eyes reflecting back at okay. you. Okay. So so it's like whitish or gray or something like that? Uh dark like Purplish okay. again, similar to what you saw on the yeah, outside. That's what and I'm what trying seen to that shrouded the okay. lamps. In that's the exactly dots. what I'm trying to determine. Yeah, and so yeah. it seems uh, okay. So yeah. you know, we'll, the they're dead, but this fog seems still move moves around yeah. their eyes. They have been marked by the Lady of Darkness. Yes, like an umbra. Uh, the Lord says, uh, I don't know what you speak of, but what can you do for us? Oh. Uh, I, 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 st I squat down to study the things of uh, feet so I get a better, you know, so when we're ready to track them down, we'll have some info. Yeah, they've got webbed toes with, uh, they don't wear boots, webbed toes with claws. Don't be difficult at all to track these things if they leave marks in the soil. should be distinctive, right? yes. Yeah. Distinctive, yes. And they're heavy, clearly uh, these, as you you know, you might move the body, maybe get a hand under them. Yeah, they're these are 200, 250 pound creatures, uh, so they're gonna leave. They're gonna leave. Yeah. Uh, I low. think uh, uh, we these, should try and find the halflings first. Yeah, these halflings were they traveling like on a wagon or? Jacoby, uh, one of the men who's you saw mm -hmm. sitting at the shore, bound up with a, a crutch, comes as fast as he can toward the Lord. The Lord. Come, Jacoby, as if he's not aware of how this guy's beaten up. Jacoby, come, come, come. Uh, and he grabs him by the top of the head. The Lord's a tall man. He grabs him by the top of the head and kind of pushes him in your direction. Again, very patronizing posture. 
tell these tell these uh, the, the the Duke's men what you what you know. And uh, you know he looks up one eye uh, uh, swollen and bloodied where it had been mm-hmm. shut. Uh, the, 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 when when we first were waylaid by the on the road, I was I was leading the caravan of of, of uh, acrobats and, and 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 the troop. We were waylaid by four of these creatures, and the halflings uh, uh, kicked their wagon and their ponies into full, and they turned they turned west through the sinister glen off the road, and. We have since tried to find both these creatures and the halflings. We have not been able to, but but they they are on the west side of the road yes. through how, the forest. That's where they turn. How turned. many of these halflings were there in this troop? Six in the caravan and a, a fairly large wagon. All six could s- stay in the wagon, and they had uh, four ponies pulling this little wagon. I see. I see. We have not seen anything of them, not their ponies, not their wagon, not them. We assume they've either been waylaid or they've found a great hiding place in the in the forest on the west side of the glen. The, the wee folk are even better at hiding uh, in the woodland than we are, so mayhap they could still be alive. So we ask for directions, you know, like how far or south along the road, you know, just to get a bearing of, you know couple of miles or whatever it is just so we have a place to start uh, looking right uh so he, he, you know they point right you know where the where mm-hmm. their little camp is at he he points right over the top of the tents that's the heart of the glen uh and 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 uh of course from here to the road is where we've had mm-hmm. most of the trouble uh with these these creatures and we haven't been able to find where they're coming from and then there's the road on the other side of this portion of the glen and deeper into the glen in the forest. So it's directly st- west from where I point uh, straight ahead is, is – is. and of course the Lord uh, nods and are saying, yes, this is the heart. This is the heart of the, op- the glen. Very well done. Are you guys still okay yeah. to keep playing? Uh, I know it's late. Who, say, you, who so. says the one who has worked yeah. tomorrow? So. Yeah. Oh, we can yeah. try and go a little longer, see if we can – Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. This this is uh this is one I didn't think we'd finish in one night. It's cool. Yeah. We're having a good time. So it doesn't right. matter. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear anybody complaining, do you? Right. So, <laughs> nope, nope. Yeah. The more the more complicated the sessions get, the less sure, likely we're gonna finish. No problem. Yeah, so yeah, far it's been night. awesome. So cool on the gang, man. Cool on the gang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh and then uh so he says, uh you know, you do this you do this for me because the Duke command you to but i will pay you and he jingles a purse i will pay you for this effort you retrieve those halflings and you help identify where these these creatures are or even stop these creatures uh, uh, you will be at the wedding uh, you will enjoy the feast and you will be handsome our, our thanks my lord uh, we will do our best to bring these halflings and find these uh terrible creatures and their lair so, uh, so yeah. So I guess we ready our stuff and make ready to travel. Okay. Uh, the the halfling comes to you uh, mm-hmm. before you leave, uh, and he says, "It was a pleasure traveling with you, despite the uh, horrors that we witnessed." Uh, I am headed back uh, uh, to uh, Robleta to my wife. Is there any news you want me to take? Yes, with you? Uh, you might as well. Also, report to the Duke uh, when you arrive, because you'll be mm. swifter than a, than uh, any mm. horsebound messenger, and hopefully by river you'll be safe as well. So, right. bring him word of what transpires here at the at the Glen of Lord Wainwright and these yes. fish folk. Um, tell them also that. Uh, yeah. It seems the influence of Penumbra is upon these creatures. Uh, yeah. God. Valiant, save us all from this. What is happening? Yes, we know not. But the what shadow is, is certainly on the move. Uh, uh, so after you say your goodbyes, you see him uh, uh, mount up into the water. Now his little craft has no baggage. So whatever was baggage, he was delivering oh. to the Duke. So his his little canoe now is empty and light 
and he's pretty good navigating. Again, the, this river, as you know now coming down it, is not super fast. He can navigate back up it. It just will take him an extra couple of days probably. Right? Um, but anyway, it's empty. Yeah. So whatever baggage or whatever gear he was bringing, he was bringing and, to the Duke. I mean, to, and I'll, me, to I'll the Lord. I'll make him the same offer as uh, Vaughn. We'll meet at the tavern uh, the same you know, whatever is left of time, you know, okay. 13 days or whatever it is, uh, hopefully we'll be back and we can meet. And uh, yeah. uh, Gladly, gladly. It is things like this that bond men yes. to men or half men <laughs> to men. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will Keep be there. Eye open. Now you promise, you promise me you too will you be there. Best. You can't. You cannot die here among the likes of Lord Wayne. Just make sure you keep yeah. your eyes open on the way back, uh, yeah. Master Boatman. This yeah. river seems more dangerous than before. Yes. Keep to the eastern yeah. shore. And, uh, well, I suppose it's, it's difficult to, to cross the, the, the breadth mm -hmm. of the river now, but uh, be careful. Mm -hmm. Perhaps consider mm -hmm. cold camps on the way back. Yes, most most likely I will drop anchor and I will camp in the boat. I usually do, but looking at those amphibious-looking fish creatures, I may not want to be on the river. I may have to go yeah. to foot. Yeah. Um, I'm, I don't keep know. to the east bank. It seems that whatever this penumbra wants, it's all here in the west. So you should be safe on the yes. east bank. Okay. All right, uh, so you see him push his little boat out. He's in it, and he's paddling pretty good, uh, uh, kind of at an angle, right, best he can. Moves pretty quick. It's uh, it's not as low in the water. It's almost skimming across the water. He's light. The boat is super light now that there's not all this gear and two other men in it, right? Okay. All right, uh, meanwhile, you haven't seen the Lord. He's been obviously back in his tent doing whatever he's doing. Uh, Penelope is, and her lady's maids are waiting on these injured and sick. Uh, for Lord, uh, although he obviously had a small force and he had some knights here, he doesn't appear to be well equipped with uh, doctors or clerics or, or somebody who could have been helping these these uh injured you know yeah. uh maybe he's not a great lord or a great administrator from the looks of uh, quality of his yeah. you know his daughter and her maids are waiting on these guys yeah. right he might not even be as rich <laughs> as you would think for uh, uh you know for but but you've heard him jingle a large bag of gold or, yeah. or something right okay all right so we'll set off okay. and yeah. attempt we to set up immediately. Yeah. Try, try to find sign of the halflings okay. first. Yeah. Uh, so you do get to the spot um, in the glen where uh, uh, where it appears the wagon had turned uh, off the road to the uh, again. This is carved pretty good on the road. You can find these little tire tracks and these pony tracks. And uh, you can see clearly footprints from again. It looks like it was about four to six. Uh, pair of feet mm -hmm. of these creatures uh those though don't go west into the glen they go east um you know they go east into the forest and the front side of the glen which you just pass through to get to the road so at the road you can see this evidence you've seen tracks right but none of the tracks seem to go west into the glen just this wagon so they didn't Pursue. they didn't yeah. chase the wagon you think into the western forest so wherever these creatures are at in the glen, on the east side of the road, um, it's it's clear they're coming from somewhere, but they're not crossing the road. Yeah, this is good. This means the halflings are probably safe. Uh, um, and it, it makes sense, too, that... Yeah. If this was live, Dell would be having a blast, because Dell's oh, really much nice. Uh, so they're probably... <laughs> Dale would have an eyebrow up going, huh? They're probably safe, right? The halflings are probably safe, but we should see them. Maybe they're injured uh, if their wagon, you know, got... Indeed. got... We must make sure they... We, if they're alive, we must make sure they get back to safety. Yes, that's our first priority. So we go west, looking for the halflings right. first. Okay. As you trudge off into this, uh, this is now beginning to be more wooded. It's very dark. Uh, 
uh, uh, overhang of these trees as the as the forest knots up top. Uh, it is a, it is a glen, but it is definitely you can see where it gets its name is a sinister dark wood. Uh, as you as you make your way through it, following these tracks, uh, half an hour in, as you get in deeper into the forest, you see the wagon, and you see uh, you don't see any ponies. You see the wagon slightly uh, skewed and turned about 50 hmm. meters from you. All right. Yeah. All right, Bo and the Ready will approach as silently as we can. Yeah, from like different okay. angles. Um, yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, so uh, I'll, what I would do is just roll against you, right, if there's something to yeah, see you. Yeah, we'll only okay. surprise uh, As you approach. A, we surprise them right. on a one to three. So if we roll one to three, right. there's no, no, he rolls for them. He rolls for them. Oh, okay. That's we what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, just yeah. to see if they – right. Yeah. Right. Uh, like stealth. I'm right. just treating yeah. it like you guys yeah. are right. being stealthy. Can they see you, right, if there's something yeah. here to see you? Uh, as you approach the wagon, you, you see boots. As you, you, you approach this little wagon, it's clearly too small for humans for the most part, but it, it could clearly have housed four plus two in the front. Uh, one of the tires is off. It's buried. You can see lots of tracks around the wagon that are boot tracks. I mean, in the mud and the muck. And you see, uh, obscured by the, the front side of the wagon, you see two boots, uh, two legs, uh, you know, a pair of legs crossed, boots out, uh, 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 you know, sitting out like it's sitting on the front of the wagon. These look like from here. They they're too big for halflings. They aren't moving. They didn't move as if they've heard anything. Let's approach. Uh, uh, as you as you creep in, I don't know which one of you would see this first. Whoever's coming around the south side of the wagon, you see a sleep uh, sitting there asleep with, uh, you know, uh, nodding off with his arms on a, uh, a mace or sword or something between his legs. He's asleep. His feet are up crossed and he's sleeping. And he is wearing uh, from here. The garb looks uh, uh, to be that of uh, Visitant gear. Uh, shaped blade, uh, helmet, and uh, definitely the 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 garb and robes of a uh, of a visitor. Mm. And this is warrior. I mean, this is this is this would be warrior gear. This is not this is not civilian gear. This is of some kind of tr or, or troop. And he's asleep. Yeah. And he's clearly alive, but asleep. So. Let's let's roll to see who sees them. Um, one to three is me, and then four to six is Jose. One to three, so I guess it's me. So I will. Okay. I I signal to to Eldren, you know, quiet and look at me, and so I. I sheath my bow, and I draw my sword, and I approach, the man. Okay. Yeah. He he does not appear to hear you as you get right up within. Yeah. And the, is he sleeping with his weapons right by him, or? Well, he's uh -huh. he's fallen asleep on a on oh, a okay. curved blade that's kind of sitting in the, and his hands are draped mm -hmm. over and he's asleep. But so his curved his scimitar is okay. like in the mud. Yeah, so I'll 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 right. sneak up to him and put my blade, like next to his neck, and I'll tap him gently with it. And I'll say, uh, wake up quietly. Make no sound or you die. His, uh, he opens mm -hmm. one eye, looks about, sees you, and then uh, pulls his hands mm -hmm. away from his sword and sits back, opens both eyes. Kind of kind of gives you a, a, mm -hmm. a smile. So I say, you don't look like a halfling. What are you doing here? Yeah. He he, sp he speaks for you. He speaks to you first in his native okay. tongue, and then waits to see if you understand yeah. it or respond. I uh, probably don't. I have eleven, so I don't think okay. I have multiple languages. Yeah. Okay. So then, in a thick accent uh, from uh, Visserton, he 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 says, <laughs> "You have just sealed your own death, oh. my friend." How do you figure that? Well, you can't leave here alive now. And he uh -huh. nods 
Uh, and you see it first, Eldrin. You see uh, not far, maybe 25 meters down in the, deeper into the forest to the south, you see a couple of tents and a couple of, 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 of Vistarian soldiers mm. walking around that tent. And he says, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Spy. Vistarian spies threatening death. Uh, armed for battle. I guess the wedding down at Asylum is not going to go the way the Lord Wainwright would hope. The wedding. The wedding. Yes, our Lord. Our Lord will uh, wed that wench. Uh -huh. And we will have a foothold here in the south, right at the back door of the Duke. And we are not just spies. You plan on invading? Is that it? He said, we have already invaded, you fool. There are hundreds of us in those woods. Mm. Your halflings. You won't be getting your halflings back. But you won't matter to you anyway because you aren't going to get out of here. What did you do with them? Do they live or are they slain? They live. We have no reason to kill them, but we can't let them go until, uh, well, until... We are ready to act. We can't let them tell the world we're here. I see. Then I'm so afraid you have, it, you have your blade on his throat. Uh... I can't let you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, so the other Stan, two don't appear to have seen you. It. They don't appear to be. Oh, I'm sorry, you said what? Well, you'll come quietly with me. I'll tell him, well, you'll come quietly with me. Uh, he smiles. One, one and, word uh, out of you, and it'll says, be well, your last. Yeah. He says, either, either I die by your hand or I'll die by the hands of my own people. Uh, if you think, if you think I'm going to uh, go with you peacefully, you're, you're crazy. Then I am sorry to hear that. And I slit his throat. <laughs> oh, yep. Okay. Uh, he, he gurgles. He, he reaches out yes. as he realizes, looking for his sword, mm -hmm. which has fallen over in the mud. Uh, and, and then he grabs his, he watches the blood pour over his hands. And then he's mm -hmm. gurgling, spitting. He starts to stand up. You give him a little push, make sure he can't. And he's into the mud. Mm -hmm. He rolls over. His feet kick a little bit. Uh, his eyes, though. Mm-hmm. They never betray his commitment to his people, right? He doesn't. There's no fear in his eyes. There's no regret. Uh, you can tell he is utterly committed to uh, to this course of action. This, yeah. This, uh, yeah. So yeah. I. So yeah. he died. He he didn't die with any yeah. regrets. Yeah. Right? Well, okay. it's too bad. So I'll sneak over to where Eldrin is. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> yep. And Eldrin, you could see this, these, some of these tents, you know, off in the forest too, yeah. right? With a couple of these uh, soldiers walking, mingling about. They just haven't noticed mm -hmm. you guys at all. So we should we should scout closer, see how many of them there are. If it there, if there are few in number, perhaps we can whittle down this invasive invasion force a bit. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I'm assuming you're going to move through the forest, right. keeping low, right. sneaking, trying to see. Uh, you, you travel 15, 20 minutes south, deeper into the forest, along that ridge and mountains in the forest. Uh, and you've counted lots of tents hidden in the trees, lots of tents, uh, maybe two soldiers to a tent. You've counted at least 150 soldiers. And, and, and at some point... You know, I, I would assume no, you're not no, going to just no, keep no, going no, south, no. right? Yeah. But enough, enough here that you're thinking there may be 300 yeah. soldiers uh, total uh, in this forest somewhere. They obviously, you can put two and two together. They come. They obviously came along the coast with their uh, with their uh, their noble mm -hmm. leader, and while uh, and they must have unloaded there on the coast uh, on the beaches and came up the forest into the trees and have hidden. Here uh, is what your best guess is. How yeah. long they've been here? Your best guess is a couple of days. They haven't been here for months or weeks or anything. Probably a few days. Yeah. So they've they've probably landed at the village on the channel, 
or even at Asylum, yeah. And then, but they must have, yeah. And March Asylum, up, right? Yeah, because yeah, Asylum is owned yeah. by the Lord, right? That's the castle, yeah, yeah. Where, and that's uh, where they would have been expected. So that's where they landed. Yeah. Mm. I right. think we must get back and see if we can get some horses yes. from the Lord, and we need to we need to ride to Robleda post haste. Yes, there's not too much two men can do against 150 soldiers. So, did we see any plan. sign of of the prisoners as we were scouting? Yeah, of the halflings. Uh, yeah, you would have seen you would have seen them fairly close to the wagon, only a few tents mm. into the forest. They would have been tied up uh, in little, uh, uh, not in cages, just tied up to stakes uh, that have been, you know, driven into the ground, and they're mm -hmm. tied to those. About six of them, uh, three girls, three males, three uh, females. You think we should risk freeing them? They would probably make little noise uh, in escaping. That is true, but. Uh... Uh, well, we'll see what happens. I mean, we, we, we must get make our way back up north. And uh, if the Visertani have discovered their dead sentry, we'll just have to make a run for it. If they haven't, then perhaps we have a chance, perhaps at nightfall or dusk, and we can make a, a night raid. It depends on whether the uh, Visertani sentry that I killed is, 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 has been already discovered. Tactically, they appear to set four to five tents uh, in groupings, mm -hmm. and these are mm -hmm. two-man tents, uh, and they try to put them you know, in such a way to shelter the trees. And, uh, and then a few paces away, there's another grouping of four or five tents. Uh, again, this would be the second grouping of tents would be where these halflings were at. So you know there's about eight no. tents total at this leg of the forest, right? And they're separated by for about 15 meters, these two groupings of tents, right? It's the second grouping of tents that have these Jeez. halflings. Yeah. Perhaps, uh, perhaps if we wait for break. if we wait for nightfall, we can shoot some fire arrows at the farthest end to distract them into their tents. And then uh, the other one can go and try to cut these halflings free. That might work. That might work, but we'd have to move swiftly. Uh, Indeed. In, in the dark, we may lose them. So uh, that's our best shot. So we'll take some sort of vantage point where we can see perhaps if it, this goes slightly, you know, there's a hill or something where we can look. Or up on a tree. It's a forest. Or, oh, sure. up on a tree. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but a hill, a yeah, hill would be okay. better because then we would need to light arrows on fire and uh, okay, yeah. and sure. Night so we can sure. like you know, sort of hide a, yeah. a small uh, that, fire, right? You are both, uh, you are both um, uh, competent uh, rangers. You can certainly mm -hmm. get the lay of the land and find mm -hmm. high ground, right? Uh, I, I'll roll to see roughly how far that high ground is I'm from the tribe, Anakin. The, right. So uh, it's there, of course, yeah. but how far? It is, let's see, 7 to 14 meters. It would be roughly 14 meters from the, uh, from the uh, okay. tents. Okay. So now this is the second grouping of tents with the halflings? Or is this the first Our idea of tents? is to try how far to get away, into a position. Yeah. How, how far are the two groupings from each other, roughly? About uh, they are 20 meters, uh, 15 meters. Then, then 15 the one without there. the halflings. We want to start a fire there so we can. the other guy can okay. circle around and try to cut the halflings uh, free. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep, and there's five tents in that first grouping, and that's 15 meters from the other grouping of tents, mm -hmm. right? And the hill that you're on, this ridge that runs maybe the length of the forest maybe, is about 14 meters from those tents on the east side of the tents. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Closest to the road. Okay. Okay. So, so you want to you want to yeah. wait till sure. nightfall. Your goal is to wait. Okay. Tell so, me your goal. We'll see ahead. if this is yeah. So the idea is that uh, Martin will be at the hill and uh, try to maybe dig out like a, a a little pit right on the side 
so that when I light the fire, the okay. light from it doesn't reach the camp, right? So it'll be sort gotcha. of sheltered. Right. Because yep. I want to light a small fire with okay. some little firewood, and it's just a place to. Okay. Uh, I'll also, yeah, I'll to also be wrapping, uh, I don't know, four or five arrows in rags and soaking them with oil, which I do have. So I'll tear nice. strips of my cloak, nice. and I do nah, have some oil. You're, you're not going to use wood. You're going to use old animal droppings, less smoke. Oh, okay, excellent. <laughs> right. we, nice. we got the actual nice. horseman giving us some <laughs> advice. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's so, awesome. Uh, it's awesome. So that I can, you know, light these, <laughs> you know, be ready to light the arrows and then start shooting the tents. Uh, if I can, maybe the ones on one side okay. and the ones on the other side, except for the halfling tents, to allow him, to allow right. uh, uh, right. Eldrin to sneak up and free the halflings. Okay. Okay. And the halflings are in the under the four bundle of tents, which are right. 15 Cause, meters. Because our, hope, our hope is that yeah. the, the, you know, the Vistar, yeah, they would Created go to try and put up the fires and look for the archer so I can sneak right. around. Okay. Okay. So all I'll ask you to do is hit mm -hmm. these tents, right? Uh, I, you will get. I will give you two. I'll give you two rounds of free shots on the first two tents before uh, before you would be put in an initiative cool. position. Yes. Does that make sense? In which they would yeah. start responding to it, uh, and that would give you, sir. Once these tent, these first two tents, you would have uh, obviously two rounds before cool. they start responding. So it gives you an idea of how right. much he can get mm -hmm. going. That's if you hit the Correct. tents, right? Correct. The broad side of a tent. These are AC. Mm -hmm. They're AC okay. nine, right? Okay. They're not moving. They're tents. They're not going anywhere. And okay. you're short oh, range. Excellent. So they're excellent. AC nine. So okay. now you want to get the two closest to you, or do you want to get the two far tents? You want to get the two closest to the other camp? Oh, uh, for your first two I'd shots, because you want the fire yeah. as far away. So you want to draw them yeah. to the north, okay? As far away okay. from the halflings as possible, and, and from our escape. So route, all I'll ask right, as far from our escape route as okay. possible. So for timing yeah. consequences here, Eldrin, you want to wait till they're no. alerted, or do you I, want to? I'm going to sneak, even if it's on the ground. I'm going to leave my bow and and, and quiver on my back. Going to okay. sneak as far as close as I can get to the halflings under the brush. Uh, okay. So as soon as they as, okay. as they start moving there, I can leap up and start cutting them free. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Now, so you know, there are uh, in the camp center there are two uh, two guys watching, right? So uh, right. on watch, one in the center of this camp, one in the center of the camp you're crawling into. So they do have in these these bundles of five tents, they have one guy right. that keeps watch, right? Who knows how long they're on? So you know, there's one guy out there all right so you're gonna crawl in so we're gonna first see how well you do under darkness uh as close as you get you crawl within speaking distance of these halflings uh on your belly uh you can see them they have not noticed you that's how well right. hidden you are right you can gleam from that you're with almost you're almost close enough to whisper to them and they have not noticed you all right sir so you yes want to shoot so that's so that's round one. Now remember, you have two shots, of course, and you're going to get to do something else again before we would have a potential. Alert, okay, so right? first shot rolls a 14, 15. So that hits. Okay, yeah. oh yeah. So it hits. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll, you're going to roll a die eight to see uh, how quickly this fire spreads on this tent for potential damage yeah, to those inside. One on the die eight. Okay. So it's it started slow. It's yeah. not a big fire yet. So Nobody's second noticed. Second arrow to okay. the same spot. Okay. That is and in total of eleven, so that hits armor class seven. So yeah. Okay. Uh roll died eight. Now this is a separate tent or the same tent? Oof. I'll make it a separate tent. Just just to maximize. Yeah. Okay. So roll, so roll to see how quickly. Oh, okay. So that hits and catches uh -huh. pretty quick. Um, all right. Uh, you got one more turn here. You've crawled in. You got one more turn before I make, uh, I make these, uh, response checks. 
Uh, oh. All right. So wait. So he's he's caught one on fire pretty good. The other one is just All right, burning. So I I sneak out and I'm gonna basically draw my bastard sword with my right hand and my newfangled uh, magic knife with my left. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try and sneak behind the halflings and cut them loose with the knife that should be preternaturally sharp. And I'll whisper, "Nice, run to the south. I'll catch up with you. Stay quiet and hidden." Okay. Uh, they they are first of all uh, originally spooked because they right. had no clue you were there. So they're kind of spooked. Uh, the minute you cut them, they're they're headed under the brush. Uh, they disappear in this darkness in this brush. Pretty, I mean, you're pretty. Rem it's remarkable right. how they vanish, uh, and they move. All right, so uh, you have the one tent now is burning full. The other tent is mm -hmm. climbed, uh, and it's starting to burn. The uh, the guy in the camp that you mm -hmm. just lit fire has spotted this fire. He turns uh, and he starts to he starts to move toward it, and then he thinks better of it, and he and he yells out. Um, and you see now, you hear some barking and yelling as these tents now are ablaze. Now, it is round three, gentlemen. Now we roll initiative for those that are involved. They may mm -hmm. not have seen you, but we need an initiative. I'll just roll the side for the bad guys. T two. I, I got to get new <laughs> Did you borrow Dell's dice? Well. Yeah, that's it. You've yeah. been playing too much with Dell. It's rubbed off on you. <laughs> that's never good. Yeah. <laughs> round three. Uh, uh, I got Holy it too as well, cow. but at least I'm Four. shooting. So Four. okay. <laughs> Four. Okay, Eldrin. So you would have an opportunity now. Uh, when you hear 15 meters north, uh, and of course you cut these guys mm -hmm. and you tell them to run. You you hear, you look up, you see these tents burning about 30 meters, eh, 25 meters from your spot, and you hear the guy mm -hmm. yell. Right, it, you can hear it. It's audible, but it's not so loud. That uh, you hear any response from the tents in the middle of the place you're at. So, right. what do you want to um, do? I'm uh, now the guy that's in your little area stands up and he's 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 looking about when he hears the yell, which and he's maybe ten meters. I guess away. I should I should move over and get him and, and try and take him down. Okay, uh, that's surprise because right. he does not know you're there. So let's use this newfangled. Uh, uh, two weapon fighting rules. Ooh. I got the magic knife, so I yep. got a plus one. I got nice. a plus one to hit from the yep. knife, but I do my sword damage. Nice. nice. So that is uh, from behind. So I rolled a total of 12. So that's Ooh. usually hits armor class six. I think from behind I would hit AC four. Yep, it does. Yep. And I rolled a total of. Uh, Six hits. Oh, all right. So uh, you kill this. Tell me how you kill I, this guy. I'm guessing that yeah. basically the, the way he would, do, he would do it is that he'd come back behind the guy and stab him in the back with a sword. And as he tried to scream, like, slash his throat, his windpipe <laughs> with the knife. Nice. So you're, you're right. kind of holding his body right. up with both weapons. You slide him and, out and quietly. Him down. As his body do yep. just dropped. Yep, laid him down. Uh, looking quickly around, you don't see, hear any one of these tents around you coming to life. You, though, sir, are he's now scrambling around. He's going over and shaking the tent, uh, one of the tent flaps and mm -hmm. yelling inside. Uh, and it's your go, sir, as he's, I... he's moving around. Not to the burning tents, to the two that aren't burning. Or the one. That's one. He can only get to one tent. So here's the question. Do I shoot him or do I set another tent on fire? Uh, I'd shoot him because we already got the diversion, right? That's true. That's true. I'll shoot the guy. <laughs> yeah, you could, you I'll could, shoot you him could with light a, him I got fire. two more burning arrows, so I'll shoot him with one of them. I mean, what the oh, hell? Light and that's him a on 19 fire. on the die. I'm not even going to look. Oh! Yeah, it's like, <laughs> That's awesome. Roll damage. So it's two points for the arrow plus whatever, you know. Uh, one die Ooh. eight for fire damage, I believe, right? Is it one die eight? I think it is. I don't know. Maybe, I'm maybe pretty it, sure it's one die eight for oh, oil. Oh, yeah, and fire. that's right. For oil, it's uh, 
Yeah, one D eight. Right. Yeah, one D eight. So let me roll that again. That is a five. So. <laughs> oh, he, so he, he you you I mean, cure him in the back. You don't know it, but it kills him. Yeah. It, it kills him as it goes through his heart, uh, and he's on fire. He collapses over the tent. Uh, yeah. One two or one two or three, he'll fall into the tent. Four, five, or six, he'll spin away nice. and fall under the ground. Yeah. Okay, so. So, so make a roll for me. One, two, one, two, or three. He falls into the tent. Oh, uh, five. Oh. <laughs> okay, so it hits, goes through his heart. He bursts into flame, yeah. but he kind of stumbles okay. and falls to the side. Uh, one guy mm-hmm. sticks his head out of that tent and sees his buddy burst into flames and fall over, and he steps up out. Uh, we need to roll damage on the the two men coming out of the other two tents because these tents are on fire, so they've got to come out of these tents on fire. So roll for the first tent. That would damage. be six hits. Wow. Uh, he comes out on screaming fire. on oh, fire, wow. and you see him run off. <laughs> He's running off into the woods, burning and on fire. Roll the next. Jesus. And three this hits for the other guy. Oh, <laughs> and he too. It's enough for him. So the other guy comes bursting out on fire, uh, padding and, and, and stumbling off. You see him collapse, screaming, and they're on fire. One guy's uh-huh. almost in the trees. The other guy's here in the middle. Uh, that, though, gets the uh-huh. guy out of the tent. And one other guy out of the tent in the yeah. first grouping. So we have two guys coming out of the tent. It is now round yeah. four. Okay. And uh, again, you haven't noticed anyone Eldrin around you that sleep in this tent uh, moving. In right. These tents around you. Okay. So I'll roll initiative myself. Hey, oh, one. I did. Gee, many Christmas. I'm changing dice. I can't even pick it up. How am I going to roll it if I can't pick it? Okay, go ahead. I roll the one. Got a five, gents, for initiative. Five. I get a six. Five. Yeah. Woo. So. Okay. So you've killed one. You shot in the back that was guarding. Two came out and burned up. There's two that just came out of these tents that aren't on fire. Yeah. Right. And then of course, Eldrin, you're looking. You see these guys come running out of these uh-huh. tents on fire. You see one shot and burst into flames. You know, somewhere in the darkness on the hill, your buddy is so, so my is doing intent, his job. Because, I mean, he'll get to express it. My intent is to run after the halflings uh, as quietly as I can in terms of noise. But I will make uh, the call of a... Uh, because I'm sure we, we would have these signals, right? Of mm. a of, of a nighttime sure, whippoorwill, absolutely. which is the signal that the halflings are away. Nice. nice. Now, nice. I have no idea what that sounds right. like, but I know that's a night singing bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. awesome. It's awesome. Uh, so you hear, uh, you're watching these two that are looking around yeah. as the tents are on fire, guys are burning up, and you hear 15 meters or so uh-huh. south of you this the call of your uh-huh. friend, uh-huh. Uh, of the okay. whippoorwill. So in right. that case, then I just keep, you know, the, the arrow, which was not lit because I only had four. And right. so I relax the the, right. the the draw on the bow, and I just turn around and start running. I'm not going right. to shut off the light in case they see it. They'll go circle up to the campfire, sure. right? So it's a further sure. distraction. Sure. So I'll just go run to our predetermined rendezvous. Yeah. Okay. So as you to escape uh, mm-hmm. west, uh, east, Back right? You're headed road. east yeah. of the road, basically, right? Sinister Glen. Yeah, and as you as you back off the hill and you realize that they're they're now uh, talking to each other, they're trying to assess what the hell is going on, and you see one of them turns to head south toward mm-hmm. those other group of tents. The other one is 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 going over and, and kicking dirt on one of these burning guys. He he doesn't know, and you disappear into the darkness off mm-hmm. the backside of that hill and meet your friend. Uh, and you guys meet at the designated place, but oh, no, no halflings. I mean, you know they ran, but you Which don't know. Which way they ran? You know, yeah, where they and it's dark, ran. so it's not like we can track them right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, this, this is hilarious, Aloy, because this is very three amigos. Yeah, it's like over oh, here. Let me, let me, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna link it on the chat. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just listen to that. It's like, nice. <laughs> look, out, look out. Look out. Look out. Look out. No, it's the over here. It's the over here. Not the look out. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love it. Okay. Uh, this is not good. Uh, 
<laughs> Whip poor Will. I'm looking at it right now. There, that's um, funny. <laughs> that's the call. Can no, you, you hear have it? to. No, no, you you have to click it. Uh. Well, whoever's watching it will hear it in the background. Whoever watches this. Yeah, I don't know. So, so I'll, I'll, I, mean, you know, I told him to run awesome. south. Uh, south. I told him to run south. Toward an asylum? Yeah. Oh, so they're running into the heart. No, of no, the no. Army. Oh, I thought that, that, that we yeah. had been traveling north. No, no. North, north is north. to okay. Lord Wainwright. So they, south yeah, is to Lord Wainwright. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. It's late. Yeah. North. Yeah. So, uh, and, yeah, north would be toward. Uh, the Blue Mountains at this at this juncture, or I mean, it yeah, would right. be away, away from the army. Yeah, because I didn't want them to run straight yeah. for the river. I wanted them to run at a perpendicular, so then right. we could move them around. Yeah, yeah, right. So for all you know, yeah. they're still yeah. running. Right? Well, hopefully they didn't get turned around, but I don't think we have the luxury of standing here until you know 150 right. men come after right. us. Right. So I I think we head right. back up north toward Lord Wainwright as well. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing you notice for sure is you spied this camp. These guys were on foot. Uh, they are they are uh, minimally equipped. They have minimal baggage. These guys are wearing armor and they carry swords. But one thing's for certain: this 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 was an expeditionary force. Came off boats. They weren't packing a whole lot of stuff. They weren't packing a whole lot of. So you, I mean, you're able to glean pretty good information from what, looking at these camps while you waited yeah. for the sun to come down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, these guys were, were uh, but again, you know, there's a lot of them, so they're clearly here to hold a position or maybe even be offensive. But they didn't drag siege equipment. They didn't drag mm -hmm. lots of baggage, right? So you know this of the army as you've witnessed it, as you mm -hmm. spied them all day, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to head back to. Are you just going to start heading for the river, or are you going to head back no, to Lord Wainwright? Or do you want to avoid? No, Lord I think we have to tell Lord Wainwright that he's Correct. been betrayed. Correct. Okay. Okay, so you're running straight through the Sinister Glen to where where Wainwright's Correct. headquarters is at, right? Okay. Uh, this is going to be a, a sad, a sad state to end it on, but we're going <laughs> to end it here. We're uh -huh. going to see first. Okay, uh, as you're running through the forest, you hear uh, and note and realize that you have caught up to some other creatures oh. that are in front of you, headed toward his the tents. The fishmen. You've come up behind oh, creatures, fishmen. right? They don't appear to have heard you as you as you're running up. You you see them or hear them before you. They they uh -huh. don't appear to have responded, right? And they're creeping through the trees. Uh, headed toward Lord Wainwright's oh, tents. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. And yeah. we'll leave it on <laughs> that. How, how, many, how many? Is it, is it like five or is it like uh, 20? Six, six oh, okay. to eight six that, eight that you can, can see. see. Six okay. to eight that you can see. And it is these finned, yeah. uh, amphibious yes. uh, awesome. lizard creatures. Yeah, and they're big, so you can see awesome. them. They're big guys. Okay, and that's where we'll end up awesome. right there. Awesome. Awesome. 